I'm still, I'm still sitting in the fun seat, you know, getting to do the cool stuff. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, I don't know. Maybe Ring Car Girl. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Marina over here. Uh, obviously, another big fight for you, facing another former world champion. Uh, what does kind of this matchup mean with Jessica Andrade for you? Mais uma tremenda luta para você enfrentando uma ex-campeã. É, o que, que significa para você enfrentar a Jessica Andrade? Oh, enfrentar a Jessica para mim vai significar uma nova chance pelo cinturão. Então, acredito muito que vencendo ela eu vou pedir o cinturão e vai me dar essa oportunidade mais uma vez. Uh, I think that facing Jessica will mean to me another opportunity to, to have a shot at the title. I think that winning this fight means that I can ask for a shot at the title, and that's, what, that's the meaning that it has for me. Yeah, and the timing is obviously perfect with the championship fight on this card. Um, how do you see this whole thing playing out? How do you think you're w you win your fight? And then how do you think this championship bout goes between uh, Zhang and Yan? E o tempo dessa luta perfeito, você tem uma luta contra ela agora, no mesmo momento que a luta pelo cinturão está acontecendo. Como é que você vê isso na tua cabeça, você vencendo essa luta, quando é que isso aconteceria? Acredito que é o momento perfeito é, estar nesse grande card, lutar contra uma ex-campeã e tendo a chance de já já descobrir a nova campeã do peso palha. Acredito que tudo tudo está indo da melhor maneira possível. E independente de quem ganha ali no, no cinturão, Eu vou chamar alguma garota chinesa. Um, I think it, it, the timing is perfect. You know, being in this great card, facing a former champion, actually getting to know by the end of the night who is the strawweight champion. It, 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 everything's working out great. And what I know is, regardless of what happens, I'm going to call out a Chinese fighter. Right here. Uh, kind of going off of that, obviously UFC 300 is a big milestone for the company, but you personally, was it important to be on this card considering the fact that the title is uh, later on in the event? É, obviamente, o UFC 300 é importantíssimo para a organização, mas para você, importante estar nesse card justamente porque o título está sendo disputado é, mais para frente no mesmo evento? Também. Também é, é muito importante eu estar nesse card junto com a disputa de cinturão. Mas uh, acho que a minha maior alegria de estar nesse card é que eu fui uma das escolhidas e acredito que por merecimento de luta, sabe? De mostrar quem sou, quem eu sou, a atleta diferenciada que eu sou dentro do octógono. Então acredito que por isso eu tô nesse evento e ali o cinturão é, é a cereja do bolo. Então tá tudo perfeito. Um, I think yes, being on the card at the same time that the title fight is actually happening, it, it, it's it's very important. But also to be in this historic event, I think is is rewarding, and I think is deserving. That that shows that the, the company looks at me on the merit of you know the fights that I put out, the 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 output that I that I that I do. So um, it's a pleasure to actually have this opportunity, and also I think is the icing. The the title fight is like the icing on the cake. And do you have a preference of which fighter you would like to challenge for the title? E alguma preferência de qual das duas lutadoras você gostaria de desafiar para o cinturão? Acredito que a Ian seria um nome melhor, porque eu já venci a Ian Shaunan, então eu daria chance a ela se ela se tornar campeã de uma revanche, mas independente, eu quero só a minha chance pelo título. I think Ian Shaunan would be the, the best option, uh, obviously because I faced her. I would gladly give her the chance of a, of a, of a rematch against me for the title. Uh, but obviously, any of them well, would be great to challenge. And last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between um, Alex and Jamal? E a minha última pergunta é o pensamento geral sobre o grande evento principal da noite entre Alex Boatin e Jamal Hill. 
Chama, né? Tem, acho que Alex Potan tem tudo para vencer e, e pegar esse cinturão aí. Chama, right? Uh, I think Alex has everything in his favor to win and, uh, and keep that title. Uh, Marina over here. Uh, Marina, before your last fight, you had lost a couple of fights. I'm wondering, as an athlete, has it ever been difficult to keep up your confidence when things aren't always going as well in the cage with the results? É, antes da tua última vitória, você passou por duas derrotas e a pergunta é: é difícil para você? O quão difícil? Como é que é para manter a concentração, para se manter é, indo para frente é, quando tem um revés? É, tivemos um, um período ali meio turbulento, uh, uh, passamos por momentos difíceis ali, e então eu não consegui lutar como como eu sempre lutei. Então eu digo que pô, a minha cabeça não estava naquela luta, mas como eu estava lá, né, forneci essas derrotas. Então conseguimos consertar tudo que estava errado, então vocês puderam ver na minha última luta, na minha última vitória, Mostrei quem eu sou de verdade, agressividade para buscar a vitória. Uh, I think that it is about the, the moment that you're in, and I, and and I we were going through some difficulties back then, and I don't feel that I I was in that fight. Obviously, even though my body was in that fight, um, I was basically providing you know uh, these these wins and, and and kind of these losses. But I think we fix things, um, we improve things. You saw who I am in the last fight. That was that was there. The aggressiveness was there, and always looking for the win. There are several top fighters from Brazil in the strawweight division. Yourself, Andrade, Lemos, Dern. What do you think it says about just the level of female talent coming out of Brazil that you have so many top contenders in your weight class? Muito talento nos palhas do Brasil. Você, a Jéssica, você tem a Mackenzie Dern, você tem a Amanda Lemos. Você, o que que isso significa que tem tanto talento vindo do Brasil nessa divisão? Ah, acredito que as brasileiras viram a oportunidade de, de, de mudar a vida e, e se você consegue se doar ali tudo que você tem para se tornar melhor, você tem as chances. E é isso que está acontecendo. O Brasil está vendo essa oportunidade e está conseguindo roubar ali os melhores lugares na divisão. Um, I think that the Brazilians saw the opportunity to actually change their lives, and and if you if you put everything out there, if you if you do the work, and if you give your all, uh, you're able to accomplish things. And I think that's why you see so many Brazilians, and Brazil, Brazilians have seen and seized the opportunity to conquer this division. James, one last one. Yeah, sure. Marina over here. Yeah. Was there any hesitation taking this fight? I know you and uh, Jessica do have a bit of a friendship, or at least there's a level of respect there as well. É, teve, você hesitou em algum momento em pegar essa luta, porque sabe se você tem um, um nível de amizade com ela, definitivamente respeito, é, ao, hesitou né, para aceitar isso? Respeito, mas uh, apenas trabalho, apenas uh, apenas trabalho eu e ela, não, não temos nenhuma outra relação, apenas relação de trabalho. E isso faz parte do game, né? se tu quer ser a melhor, você precisa lutar com, com todo mundo que estiver na sua frente. Um, respect, yes, um, but it, it's a working relationship. Um, that's that's what we have. The the level of relationship that we have is 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 uh, it's very professional, and I think that's part of the game. If you if you're gonna you have to if you want to succeed, you're gonna have to face everybody. Okay. Thank you, guys. Hey guys. Alexander. Uh, yep. Welcome back. It's been a long time just to be in a fight week on a card like this. What a way to return, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, almost two years not competing, but to be honest, it doesn't feel like. It feels like for me five, six months. But uh, yeah, what a comeback to have uh, on the biggest card uh, of the year. Or what? 
Why does decade. it feel like it's been only five, six months? <clears throat> oh, it feels great. I mean, uh, those two years just put oil in the fire, you know. It motivates me a lot and uh, to compete and to win on Saturday night and to show uh, the world or uh, to remind the UFC and the world that Alexander Rakic is uh, still here to claiming the title. And you were supposed to fight Jan in January and you know, that didn't come together. Is this a, a better scenario for you against Yuri? I mean, of course, uh, Yuri is better ranked and uh, I think uh, the people want to see this match uh, against Yuri. Me and Yuri had some back and forward beef on Twitter. So, and uh, he's from Europe, I'm from Europe. He's living uh, not far away uh, where I live. So uh, let's find out who the king of Europe is and later on who the king of the world is. Yeah, and speaking of the king of the world, I mean, how do you feel you fit into this division if you come back with a win, title fight on this card? The champion has changed multiple times since you've been gone. Uh, what does a win here do for you in terms of where this division goes moving forward? Uh, it depends how the fight goes. If I uh, perform very well, like I used to do, uh, could be that uh, I will be next fighting for the title. Alex, right here. Uh, obviously... Yuri's a big name, UFC 300 is a milestone, but was it also important to be on this card given that, you know, the light heavyweight title is also the main event? 100%, you know, everybody is watching UFC 300. Also, though, they're uh, like soft MMA fans, they would watch UFC 300. So the whole world watching uh, UFC 300 and what a way to have a comeback and uh, to win on Saturday night and to remind and to prove, uh, prove people wrong who are doubting on me. You also mentioned you had a little Twitter beef with Yuri. Was any of that like legitimate or personal or was it just trying to get him to take the fight? I mean, he, take it, he, I mean, he took it personal uh, a couple of years ago, but I really don't care, you know, since uh, Jan canceled the fight in January, I immediately called out Yuri and asked for February and he mentioned February, March. And then I say, let's go February. And then he said he could. He can go March. March, I couldn't. So Mick Maynard made the offer, okay, let's do it in UFC 300. And I was 100% in, you know. Was it difficult to start and stop your camp so much uh, and the change of opponent? Uh, not so much, you know. I'm, I'm a guy who loves to train. Uh, it's a lifestyle for me also, next to competing. And uh, I've been training all over the year. So it was not even hard. And what type of Yuri are you expecting? Because obviously when he fought Glover, a lot of people think that's one of the best fights ever. And then his last fight against Alex was pretty quick. So I'm curious, what, what type of Yuri are you expecting on Saturday? I mean, I'm expecting an aggressive Yuri, unorthodox like he used to be. And uh, it's going to be a hard fight uh, uh, for me also and for him as well. Because uh, he feels very good in chaos. And I'm, uh, I'm a guy who can settle the chaos, and uh, that's going to be an amazing fight. Uh, yeah, we will see uh, how prepared he is for that fight, because I am. And last one for me. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal, and also the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, the main event against Alex and, and uh, Hill, uh, I just hope that Hill is 100% uh, recovered. So I just hope that he don't take this fight on short, like, like on short notice to just be a, a part of UFC 300. Uh, if this is not, uh, we will have a, like a stand-up battle, stand-up war, and may the best man win. You know, both are uh, very good knockout artists and we're gonna, it's gonna be fireworks. What do you think of the, the BMF fight between Justin? Oh, man, this one is a, is a banger, you know. Um, you know, I like Max. I, I love to watch his fights. Uh, I love also Justin, you know. The, the fights are excited. Um, if I could make, if I can choose a winner, I would say Max probably, yeah. Alex, over here. Um, you're on the prelims of this card. Did that surprise you a little bit? I think a lot of fans expected this fight to be on the pay-per-view. Yeah, we were supposed to be on the pay-per-view, uh, pay but uh, I really don't care. If I need to fight on the parking with Yuri, I'm going to fight in the parking. You know, it's a fight. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter where. 
And uh, I think it's going to be about 700 days since your last fight. I know it's been a while. It's been a long time, uh, you know, you being off. Is there anything you're looking to show in the cage that maybe you've worked on over the last 700 days and anything in particular uh, you, that you've sort of added to your arsenal? 100%. I mean, I've been working like the last two years uh, next to the reha uh, uh, rehabilitation. I worked really hard to come back. I worked on all skills what I have, like wrestling, grappling and striking. And... I see the difference. I'm now 32. I'm getting in my prime. And uh, the camp was amazing. I did many new things, good things. And uh, be surprised on Saturday night to see the best rocket you ever saw. And just last one for me, you talked a bit about training and adding some new things. Uh, did you do any cross training? And who are some of the training partners you got to work with this camp? Uh, I brought some uh, young, uh, hungry fighters uh, from uh, Europe, Serbia, Slovenia, Poland, uh, Croatia, uh, Germany. So I had many sparring partners and uh, they try, all of them, they try to mimic uh, Yuri Prohaska. And uh, yeah, went really good. This, uh, this camp was uh, all about uh, sparring, so we sparred a lot. And... Air sparring for me was a shark tank, so every round a new guy came in. Two more. One, two. Alex, I'm curious with the 700 days off, did you keep an eye on how the division was developing or did you separate and take time just to recover? No, I, I saw every important fight in the top 10, 15. You know, I've been getting my eyes on it and always communicate with my uh, team and coaches and uh, man this long layoff like I said it doesn't feel long but uh, you know this just put oil into the fire you know this made me like so motivated so hungry uh, and uh, this is what I needed you know I'm more calm you know, I'm a more calm person. I became more calm, like the last, uh, comparing the last two years and now, and more confident. And a calm Alexander Rakic is a dangerous man. And last thing for me, you said this would be for who is the king of Europe. So had a bout with Yuri been something that you had seen possibly that you'd been looking forward to? 100%, you know. Uh, me and him are in the top five. We are almost the same age. Uh, uh, so this fight needs to be happened, you know, and the fans want to see it, especially the fans also from Europe, you know, to see who the king of Europe is. And then uh, we claim the world, or I claim the world, let's say. <laughs> Rakic, uh, just back here. I want to know, can you explain a little bit when you had said that uh, he's, uh, Jiri is not a real samurai, and do you think that bothered him? Because it seemed to give the biggest reaction when he heard you had said that. Yeah, I, I said he's a fake samurai because, uh, you know, you cannot, be, you cannot become a samurai after just reading a book, you know, what he coach gave it to him, uh, and live this spirit, you know. If you are a samurai, you need to live this for a long time and not for the last two, three years. So that's why I said he's a samurai, a fake samurai. Thank you, Thank you guys. See you. Armin, obviously, uh, right here. huge fight for you. These are the type of fights you've been asking for for a long time. So to be here on a card like this, a name like Charles Oliveira, is this just kind of a, a dream come true? Yeah, it's a dream comes true. And uh, so excited and uh, to be in UFC 300 and to fight for the contender number one. 
Yeah, no doubt in your mind, no matter what happens in any of these other fights, if you win this the way you think you're going to, you're fighting Islam next? Yeah, definitely. Dana White said, this, who win this fight going to fight for the title. And I'm the next. And of course, you don't want to think beyond this. This is a very difficult fight with Charles, but there's this kind of Islam saying he wants to fight June 1st. Would that even be possible to ask you to turn around in seven weeks? I don't know. I can answer this question Saturday. For sure. And uh, just your thoughts on Charles and kind of where he is at this point in his career. A lot of people have vocalized that they think, you know, he quits in fights and he folds and things like this. Do you, do you see him as that guy or do you think he's, you know, someone different now? No, how a former champion can be like this. So he, he was a former champion. He defend titles and uh, the quicker guys can be a champion. So I don't think so. Like, I'm in right here. Uh, Charles uh, did an interview earlier this week. You know, he responded to some of the things you said about him. You know, his, he's obviously limited and he takes backs really well, but nothing really else. Maybe he's not hungry. And he, he just kind of like called it bullshit talk. Do you think you are getting under his skin before this fight? I mean, I got to talk about him, you know, because he doesn't talk about me. I got to talk about him. So I want to like to get people to watch this fight more. And that's why I got to say something about him. So it's nothing personal. You're just trying to. No, no, no. I'm just trying to to get more fun to watch this fight. Um, and just two really quick ones for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Jamal and Alex and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, I want to say about BMF, I feel like Justin going to knock him out first time. And what about the, uh, the main event between Alex and Jamal? Main event is, uh, I don't know, 50-50, but to be honest, I didn't watch their fights because they're not in my division. I just, I just watched a couple highlights and uh, like 50-50, I don't know them very well. I'm in over here. You suffered your uh, second loss inside the company in June of 22. It was a very close fight, but now fast forward to April 2024, you're about to fight Oliver and potentially earn the title shot after Saturday night. So did anything change from that night to now? And if so, what changed? Uh, a lot of things changed. I'm getting better every day. I'm just 27 years old, you know, and like I'm learning every day new techniques and uh, uh, I got a lot of experience and I got three more fights after that or four more fights, I don't remember. But yeah, so I feel like now I got better and uh, my striking is getting better, my wrestling, grappling, conditional, you know, and uh, also English. Armin over here. Armin, right back here. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you. Um, we obviously saw that you were training at American Top Team for this camp. Dustin Poirier fought Charles Oliveira. Did he give you any sort of insight uh, on him as an opponent? Did you get to work with Dustin at all? No, I didn't work with uh, Dustin because uh, he had the fight before me. So, uh, But our coach is the same, you know, and uh, they already know what I got to do during the fight. And... Uh, what mistake did uh, Dustin? I shouldn't do the same, you know, and uh, we work a, lo a lot on it and um, we watch all his fights and uh, uh, we did a good job. So I feel like this Saturday I'm going to show a good performance. Um, we saw Grant Dawson in a photo with you. Who are some of your other training partners for this camp? Yeah, a lot of sparring partners and uh, I don't want to make like say one name because I have 10, 15 sparring partners and uh, everybody Help me and thank you so much, ATT. And uh, I know uh, Isaac Dalgarian uh, mentioned to me in an interview, he's Armenian as well. He mentioned about uh, getting to train with you at some point. Have, have you spoken to him at all? Obviously, he's a, a tough uh, opponent in the featherweight division. Yeah, he's a good guy. And uh, we just text, text to each other, but uh, I haven't seen him personal. Yeah, but if uh, he wants to come to ATT, of course, uh, now I'm trying to bring as much as Armenian fighters in ATT and to train, to, to train together. And just last one for me, I know you like hockey. Uh, are you going to be going to the Golden Knights game on uh, Friday night? They're playing the Minnesota Wild. If they invite me, yes. Arman, over here, what sets you apart from other fighters in the division? How do you plan to leverage those skills on Saturday night? Say one more time, please. 
How, how do you, what sets you apart from the vision and what skills set are you going to show on Saturday night? I'm going to do my work, you know, what I was training so long, you know, try to be well-rounded, try to strike, wrestle, grappling, like, I want to be best on uh, every position and I feel like my skills, it, uh, my skills, that skills I have, I can strike, I can wrestle, I can grapple. So I'm going to uh, tell him what we're going to do during the fight. If Charles invites you to the ground, is that something you're going down on the ground with him? No problem. Armin Road over here. Uh, obviously on the card is your teammate Kayla Harrison. In Miami, you were asked that thing with the fans and it became a bit of an issue. She said you guys had talked about it. Can you just explain a little bit just from your point of view what was going on when you heard it and just everything that happened? Oh, what happened, we talked, we talked to each other after that and uh, she understood what I mean and uh, now we're good. Thank you. Arman, I know you've spent a lot of your training camp in Russia, and you've been training under a three-time freestyle wrestling world champion. How much has that helped you level up your grappling and prepare you for such a high-level grappler like Charles Oliveira? Yeah, uh, in Russia, it's the best freestyle wrestling in the world, and uh, training with them, it's, uh, it gives me, uh, you know, I think the hardest training is a freestyle wrestling because they train like a crazy three times a day and uh, uh, yeah, it, ga it gave me to wrestle very well and uh, to improve my conditional, especially like wrestling conditional. Извиняюсь, продолжая тему России, самой большой точкой величия в легком дивизионе, если мы говорим и о медийной составляющей, и о спортивной, является Хабиб Нурмагомедов. Чувствуешь ли ты в себе силу, что ты можешь в этих компонентах его превзойти? Если да, то что именно для этого тебе нужно сделать? And for our English-speaking colleagues, uh, the question was about uh, legacy that left in lightweight uh, division Habib Nurmagomedov, and is Arman feel that he can uh, be even greater? If, if we are talking both of sport and media. Еще раз на русском вопрос можно? Если мы берем и спортивную составляющую, и медийную, то самое большое наследие в легком дивизионе оставил Хабиб. Чувствуешь ли ты, что ты можешь его превзойти? И если да, что тебе для этого нужно сделать? Ну, превзойти в этой жизни можно любого. Нужно сделать как, как минимум, как он, максимум, еще больше защитить титул. Раз, наверное, 6-7. И быть таким же достойным человеком, как он, и... Я думаю, что все получится. Но я не стремлюсь быть медийным, как он. Я хочу просто стать чемпионом и защитить пару раз этот титул. И просто доказать самому себе, что я могу быть чемпионом. Обоя. На английском надо? Should I say in English? А, так, что он там на английском сказал? Like I'm confused. Uh, I don't want to be super style, superstar like Habib. I just want to be a champion and defend a couple of times my belt, and that's it.
up, guys? Cody, over here, other side. Uh, obviously, UFC 300, a pretty massive milestone for the promotion. You're on the pay-per-view, so I guess, uh, what are the emotions now that fight week is finally here, you know, training camp's behind you, and now you just got the weight cut, and then the fight left? Yeah, uh, obviously super excited. You know, it's a special card. I started this sport as a fan. You know, I know where I was when I watched 100, 200. So uh, to be a part of 300 is, is special. Um, and camp's been good. It was a long camp. They called me before Christmas. So uh, it's been a while. But uh, yeah, it feels good coming down. And, and it went quick, actually. You know, sometimes camps can drag, but this one went pretty quick. Do you like getting that much notice for a very specific opponent? Like, because that was, what, four or five months ago? Yeah, it's like uh, 16 weeks. Um, I don't know. I feel like uh, all my fights in the UFC pretty much have been pretty short notice. So it was definitely different. And, and trying to taper and make sure that I was not burning myself out super quick was, was maybe the toughest part. But I feel like we had it dialed in pretty well. And uh, yeah, it was nice to have some notice. I could, I could do some different things, bring some different people in. So it was good. And when they presented you with Bo, you know, given your background and your wrestling background, was that a name that excited you? Or is, are you just a guy that's like, whoever they give me, I'm, I'm down to fight? I mean, I'm definitely a guy that whoever they give me, I'm going to fight. But I, I like to match up with Bo. I feel like I've said this before. I feel like catching him now is, is much better than catching him in two, three years when he has more time to kind of figure it out, right? He's very green. Uh, he has a lot of unknowns, and, and it's my job to kind of see if he can answer those uh, come Saturday. Kind of looking at his last few fights, do you think maybe his opponents lost before they even entered the octagon, given, you know, all the eyes on them and all the media they have to do and, you know, all the questions like, oh, how are you going to prepare for his wrestling, given that you also have a wrestling background? Maybe you don't get that question as much. Um, I mean, I definitely still get that question, right? But it's... Um I don't know if they lost before they got in there, but I do feel like they were happy to be there, right? They were just happy to be there, and uh, I definitely don't have that mindset. Um, and I bring things to the table that his other opponents haven't. So, uh, yeah, I can definitely I kind of agree with that, that sentiment. Have you had to bring in anyone specific to prepare for him or, like, bring in an old college like, or wrestling guys to, you know, kind of mimic him? Uh, so I brought some, some wrestlers in. Uh, Garrett Lindberger, he's a Sadiq Yusuf's wrestling coach. He's a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, two-time D2 national champ. I brought him, for, him in for a couple weeks. And then Nick Maximoff, who was actually my UFC debut fight, uh, I brought him in for a few weeks. So I had some, some good looks, some, some strong wrestlers. But, you know, at Factory X, we have a lot of solid big guys. So I, I had a good camp all the way through. And where were you for UFC 100 and 200? Uh, I was at my house hosting pay-per-view parties, right, with all my wrestling buddies. Uh, and the last one for me, uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event and the BMF fight? Uh, so the main event's pretty cool. You know, uh, Jamal Hill and I fought on a lot of regional shows together. We actually held the same regional belt, so I've, I've known him for a long time. And uh, to have two Michigan guys uh, on the main card of, of UFC 300 is, is pretty special. Um, BMF title, obviously, you know, both those guys are legends, and, and I'm looking forward to it. I, I couldn't even tell you who I think is going to win because they both are so special. Hey, Cody, go over here. Uh, quick question. You, you said to him that uh, Bo's former opponents were happy to be there, and that's not your mindset. I'm just curious, what is your mindset if that's not it? Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a different problem for, for Bo to figure out. And, you know, obviously when I say I'm not happy to be there, I'm happy to be here, right? UFC 300, huge card, great opportunity. But I'm not just happy to be here, right? I'm here to win. I feel like I can compete very well. I feel like uh, I've obviously had my ups and downs in the UFC. I've been a little inconsistent. So... Um, that's kind of why this fight's narrative is what it is. But when I put it all together, I'm a real problem for anybody. Cody over here. How's it going? What's up, brother? Uh, nothing much. Uh, obviously, um, you know, there's been a lot of sort of back and forth online. Is, is this personal at all for you going into the fight, some of the stuff that he said? Or is it just another fight for you? Uh, I always laugh when people say fighting's not personal, right? It's, it's personal. You're trying to knock me out in my underwear in front of my family. It's, it's got to be a little bit personal. Um, but no, I, I don't take it too much to heart. I feel like... He's a very confident guy. I feel like that's one of his superpowers is, is he's, his confidence is untouchable. Um, and so you don't know what you don't know. The guy's never been hit in the face. Uh, so it's, it's fun. Fighting's the best thing in the world when you're running through everybody, but it's a little different when you're the nail. And, and he doesn't even know how he'll react to that. And you've had to overcome a lot of adversity in your UFC career. I know it hasn't been that long. Like, how much will that pay dividends just in the sense that, you know, you've been in bad spots. You, you had, you know, a situation where you might not be back with the UFC. How much are you sort of feeding off that, being like, look, I'm still here and still uh, getting it done? Yeah, you know, I, I, one thing that I'm happy about this fight, I feel like it's the first fight in a while that I, I'm not fighting for my job, right? And, and that's a huge pressure that people don't really talk about. And so to kind of be able to fight without that pressure is huge. And then as my boy Dustin Jacoby always says, you got to go through it to get to it. And I've grown up in the hardest organization in the world. I've, I've never ducked fights. I've never said no to fights. In fact, I probably stepped up when I, when I shouldn't. Um, and so that's kind of a reflection of, of why my record is what it is and, and where I'm at. But I do think it pays huge dividends. You know, I've been the nail. I've been the hammer. And uh, 
I'm excited to show that on Saturday. Has there been any Bo fans in your DMs? I know this does <laughs> seem kind of, per you know, like there's a lot of excitement for this, obviously, and I'm sure you're getting a lot of people saying you're going to lose, you're a big favorite. Like, how have you dealt with that sort of going into the fight? Yeah, I feel like a lot of Bo fans have been in my DMs saying I'm going to lose, and then even maybe some Cody Brundish fans have said I'm going to lose, so <laughs> it's all right. Uh, but yeah, I'm just excited, man. I feel like, uh, like I said, it was a great camp. I'm ready to put on a full performance. I still feel like I haven't put on a, a true performance that really shows my, my potential and, and what better a spot than UFC 300. And just last one for me, what's the vibe like in the gym right now? Brandon Royville getting that big win a few months ago. You got Jonathan Martinez now fighting Jose Aldo. Like there's a lot of opportunities at hand for the gym and I'm sure you're sort of feeling that going into this fight. Yeah, you know, Factory X is a special place. You know, I feel like sometimes a lot of these big gyms with a lot of UFC fighters are just buildings, and then you have your own separate team in there, and, and you figure it out. Factory X is in that way. You know, our culture is we're, we're a family. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of excitement for everybody, a lot of excitement uh, for my boys and my teammates. We're all pretty close, and, you know, they're all blowing me up this week telling me to get it started. So I'm excited for it. Cody. What's up, brother? Um, double girl dad. Um, how is Kingsley? Kingsley's good, man. She's uh, She just turned three, which seems crazy you know I feel like uh, I don't know I think it's corny like people always say time flies but when you have kids it really flies and, and so yeah she's three my, my youngest will be one soon so it's been great though um, as of right now you're the biggest underdog in UFC history um, I guess does that give you motivation uh, I don't know if it gives me motivation. I think it's kind of funny. You know, I talked to some of my teammates, uh, like Rob Wilkinson. He's a PFL champion. I talked to Anthony Smith. I'm like, D you think if I got booked to fight you tomorrow, you would be a bigger favorite than Bo Nickel? They're like, probably not. So I think, you know, sometimes the odds, the odds are what they are, but sometimes I feel like it's just more a narrative of, of what people think. Um, because at the end of the day, Bo Nickel's never been hit. So for him to be that kind of favorite, it just seems insane to me. Uh, obviously, I'm a little biased, but seems seems pretty wild. I know people think he's like the second coming of Jesus Christ in MMA, but uh, I just don't see it. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Cool. Hey, Cody. What's up? Um, so this is a massive event, 300, list of huge fighters, and you're opening the main card. What does that um, mean to you? I mean, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, I know I caught a lot of flack for it. I think people forget that I just work here, right? I don't make any decisions. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to apologize for it. It wasn't up to me, and... Uh, just gives me a good, better, even better opportunity to kind of make my mark. Cool, thank you. Yep. Cody, Bo has five first round finishes. There's not a lot to study. So in your preparation for this fight, what was the keys for focus on you to be your best? Because there's not too much to focus on Bo. Yeah, you know, Bo has a lot of first round finishes. So do I. I feel like I have, I think I have more first round finishes than his previous opponents have combined wins in the UFC. Uh, so yeah, it was just me focusing on myself, really. You know, as long as I show up and, and do what I'm capable of, I don't really need to worry about what Bo's got. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.
test. Cody right here. Uh, obviously a massive fight week for UFC 300, big milestone. You're accustomed to big cards, so I guess, uh, but like, what are the emotions now? Like, you know, fight week's done, fight camp's done, just gotta cut weight and get in there and fight. Excited, I think that sums it up. The excitement, you know, all the hard work's been put in. We're here healthy, hungry, and, and motivated to go and perform, open up an amazing car in UFC 300, uh, and just grateful. Well, I was going to bring that up. Like, you know, Dana announced that you guys were kicking off the card like a while ago. Did you, were you aware of that before he even, you know, he said it on ESPN or whatever? And do you like kicking off this card? You know, this is a first for me, fighting the first on the card. Um, but, you know, we're making history. There's never been a matchup in the UFC that's two former world champions kicking off of a card. So grateful for the spotlight, grateful for the opener of the amazing card, like I said, with such amazing athletes. And also, to draw people in early, you know, they don't want to miss this fight. And you both called for this fight, and it's not always the, the UFC will book a fight that, you know, both guys want that far out. So when you called out Davidson and he called out you, were, was it just a matter of time before this was, you know, rebooked at Bantamweight? You know, I called him out. He doesn't want this fight. Um, so let's get that clear. It's a, it's a fight that's been in my mind for a while. You know, I was supposed to fight him nearly four years ago. Obviously, I got COVID really bad. I had to pull out of the fight and, and focus on getting healthy. And it's been, you know, an uphill grind to get back to this point. You know, but I stuck true to myself, believed in myself through the ups and the downs, the adversity, what life throws at you. And everything comes full circle. And uh, we're here, fight week. And uh, I'm more excited for this fight now than it was scheduled in the past. Is that just because of what he's been saying or where you are in your career or like what makes this more important? Because that original booking was supposed to be a title fight and now it's, you know, you're kicking off this card. You know, for me, it's, uh, it's a fight that I've, I've wanted for so long, you know, and to have those feelings that taken away from you from COVID, um, to be back to fighting for a world championship, um, you know, so, so those feelings still have motivated me and, and give me, you know, such drive to this camp and this call out and this visualization of my last fight to call him out. You know, he came up and had a successful debut win at Bantamweight. And uh, I feel good here. This is my weight. And I'm here to remind everybody that I'm the best in the world. I'm sure people have asked you that, but you know, he's, you know, he's called you mentally fragile. He's called you this and that. Do you think he truly believes that or is he just trying to sell the fight? Yeah, truly, he's trying to sell the fight. And also, I've been there. I've been there where I had to talk, where I wasn't mentally uh, prepared to go on there. I'm always ready to fight, you know, physically. Mentally, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing, you know, that I feel like I've really honed my skills. I work with the UFC uh, sports therapist, Micah, and we've just been consistent since moving out here. You know, it's something that I never thought I needed to do. And some of, the, some of my hardest sessions were going there with him. You know, over training, over sparring, over the grind, constant grind. Um, it was always driving to those sessions, knowing that I had to, you know, open up about my thoughts, my feelings, and I've never been one to express those. But you know, he's helped out a lot tremendously. Um, you know, not in just my athletic career, performance-wise, but life as well. So be able to balance all that together, and and stay, you know, engaged in the moments and the times and so I feel like that is a huge uh, thing that I've worked that's different you know nothing's different in my speed my power my vision you know um, it's my mental fortitude that's been what's keeping me here 
and keep me motivated and understanding this is what I w love to do. And I think that's what's really relit the passion and the, and the, and the love for the sport. So there was a time in my life when I was in my career that I was just kind of going through the motions, you know, fighting the fight. You know, I'm fighting because I want to fight. And that's, that's me being real and honest with myself, with everybody. Like, I'm so excited for this fight. This is a fight that I've called and wanted. Um, you know, going back to your question about Davison, I've been there where maybe he lacks a lot of confidence. Maybe he didn't prepare ready uh, like he needed to. So he's trying to get into the head game. And that's maybe his out. Hey, get in Cody's head. I'm going to win this fight. And that, that's just, if that's what he is going off of to be victorious on Saturday, he's going to have a long night ahead of him. Uh, and just last one for me, uh, two quick ones that unrelated to your fight. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and the BMF fight between Max and Justin? Main event, um, super excited for that. Jamal, you know, what a, a journey he's had to come back, you know, from being a world champion, finally being a world champion, to the injury, to, uh, you know, I've seen him at the PI, you know, with his rehab, you know, the way that he's been just, you know, diving at it, making one to come back, and then they, you know, they call him for the Alex fight. And look at his career. I mean, he's, he's fought the who's who. He's a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal fighter. Uh, just that's going to be an awesome main event. Um, you know, and then the BMF. I mean, you got Max Holloway, who's a fan favorite. I'm a huge fan of Max. And Justin Gaethje is just, I think he's really hitting his peak in his career over his last few fights. You know, we spoke briefly on the things that he's done um, to help get him catapulted to where he's at now. And he's looked amazing in his last few outings. So that's going to be an amazing fight and very well deserved for the BMF title. Cody over here. Given that this fight was going to take place during the COVID time and now we're here four years later, what are some ways your approach towards Davison changed since then to now, if it did change at all? You know, I was so early on in the camp when I had to pull, pull out from the fight. So we were just starting to study Davison. You know, he was doing his thing at 25. You know, he was, you know, a very good champion, was having good performances um, there. So we were, we were prepared for, you know, the best, best Davison to date, you know. Um, it was good to see him fight at Bantamweight, you know, to get that read. We, we watched a lot of that fight, you know, and got a lot of information and data that we have used all camp and going to use that in our favor, you know, come Saturday night. And your last six fights in the UFC have all been in Vegas between the T-Mobile and here at the Apex. Now that the seventh is going to be here for 300, such a historic card, how has it been fighting here in the fight capital of the world and even putting in work here like you have been at the PI and everything? You know, Las Vegas is an amazing place. Um, it's, it's growing so much, and to be able to fight here in the fight capital of the world is always great. You know, now I call this place home. I'm raising my son here, so it's great to fight in my backyard. You know, they pick me up from my house. You know, I see my son, I see my dogs before I go to battle, go into the battle, you know, come home, and it, it's great to sleep in my own bed. So it's nice to always fight in Las Vegas and to live here as well. Cody over here. Um, obviously, Davison, a former champion at flyweight, fighting him at bantamweight. Um, you know, what are sort of the implications of a victory here? Because uh, with you being a former champion, that's got to count for something, taking out someone like Davison. Yeah, Davison's a former world champion at flyweight. He's came up, he's, what, ranked eighth in the division? I think rankings are a bunch of bullshit anyways, but he's eighth, so he's, he's, in, the, he's in the rankings. You know, that'd be three fights in a row for me. I'm going to knock him out on Saturday. He puts me right back to title contention where I belong. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know Uriah Faber, your good friend, is part of, I think, Davison's management at all. Have you spoken to him at all uh, just when this fight was announced at all? Because obviously you guys have a long uh, history. Yeah, you know, Davison's been out the Team Alpha Male and trained. Uh, we have a lot of Brazilians that's trained with him and, and coached him, actually, um, from Team Alpha Male. Actually, my training partner that I brought all camp, Alan Blasio, phenomenal. You guys keep hearing this name. He'll be in the UFC real soon. Um, trained with him. He's Brazilian as well. Gave me a good look uh, for Figueiredo. And um, yeah, so I mean, with, with Uriah, it's, I'm not too sure with what he's doing with the management you know, company, but Uriah's my boy. And uh, you know, we've talked and we, we train when he comes out. And we always you know, touch, uh, touch base uh, uh, you know, throughout you know, parts of our lives. You know. Moving away from Sacramento was really tough, you know, but I couldn't be far from my son. I miss my team, I miss my, my coaches. And, and, and Sacramento was a, a place that I went out there at 22 years old, 1-0 as a pro. And, I had a dream, and, and Uriah opened his doors for me and helped me out a lot. So I'm very forever grateful for him and Team Alpha Male. I mean, I spent a decade of my life. I went from 1-0 to world champion in you know, less than two years with those guys. And, uh, you know, so I'll, Sacramento will forever be uh, a huge part of my life. But, you know, he's always going to be my friend. And 
yeah, you know, he's, he's rooting for me and, you know, giving me tips and, you know, just excited for, the, excited for this opportunity. And just last one for me, uh, I'm sure you're excited to see Jose Aldo back in the division. That's a fight you've never had in your career. Is that kind of, you know, hitting your, hitting your radar when you heard that he was coming back of a potential matchup? Because you never got to see you two fight. Exactly. You know, Jose Aldo is one of the greatest, you know, fighters that ever grace the Octagon, WC, UFC. Um, it's funny because now I train with his good friend and longtime coach, Mateus Nakao, is my striking coach. So, um, you know, I think that he would be a little, you know, unwavering of when I was to fight. And, you know, I have so much respect for Jose Aldo and, and uh, you know, Novi and Al team that uh, I'm just excited for him to be back. You know, it's an exciting fight for him to come back and uh, fight Jonathan Martinez in uh, his home country in Brazil. So I'm happy that Jose Aldo is back. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to my fight against Davidson Figueiredo on Saturday, and that's what I'm focused on. Cody over here. Cody. Getting, becoming a champion is hard enough. Trying to become a champion after doing a major reset is even harder. Look at Connor, Max, Charles Oliveira. Getting to that championship is tough. Do you believe that we're in the midst of a winning streak that gets you to a title shot? You trying to say this is a comeback? Yes, sir. I think I've been here. You know, I just kind of been, you know, Stuck in my ways, had to learn, had to grow a lot. You know, you guys saw me at 23 years old, 25 year old world champion. This is my 20th professional fight, 15th professional, 15th UFC fight. So you guys watched me grow in this octagon, you know. And honestly, it was easy to become a world champion. That was easy. That was fast tracked, you know. You know, now climbing up this mountain again, it's been a little bit rougher. I found, you know, obstacles and adversity and, and setbacks, but I'm, I'm blazing this trail, which is a different trail along this mountain, you know. Um, so I'm excited. You know, like I said, I, I called for these, these fights. These are the fights that I want. This fight is putting me back in title contention. This fight right here, you know, motivated me and has me driven to go out there and, and perform, you know. I definitely put the work in, and I'm just excited that it's fight week. I'm healthy. You know, I, I, I pray to God that Davidson has, you know, prepared well, and he's ready for an action-packed fight on Saturday. There was, there was a lot of hostility between you and the current Bantamweight champion over the years. Is that like a gigantic carrot at the end of the... Oh, that's, that's definitely. He's still the champion when it's my time to, to fight for the title again and regain the title, I should say. Then I'm, I'm happy with that fight because that's going to be a huge pay-per-view draw. No other Bantamweight in the division moves the needle like I do. You know, I just got to focus on winning and uh, everything else will fall into place. Thank you, guys.
Hey, Kayla, welcome to the UFC. I mean, you've always wanted to come here and make a splash. I don't know if there could be a bigger splash than you can make at UFC 300. Now, fight week, media underway. How exactly are you feeling about this opportunity in front of you? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I feel great. I'm excited. Um, you know, I've always taken big risks in my career. Um, and this is the biggest. And, you know, UFC 300 versus Holly Holm. New weight class, new promotion, legend of the sport. I'm all in. I'm excited. You mentioned the weight class. I feel like probably everywhere you go this week, people are saying, how's your weight? How's your weight? How's your I weight? know. So how is your weight? Do I need to flex on all y'all? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, my weight's good. Everything's dialed in. I have a sup superb team behind me. Eric Pena, the UFC PI has been helping out. My chef and nutritionist Dara has been making ridiculously delicious meals. So I've been disciplined. I've been dedicated. And um, it's going to show. Yeah, we, we hear fighters sometimes say, oh, that's the battle before the battle, right? Cutting the mm -hmm. weight. For you, obviously, it, it is a new weight class. Do you almost feel like once you've got those scales, it's like just time to have fun at that point? Then it's fight night. You can put on the show and, and, and get the job done. I mean, I'm already having fun. You know, like this is the haze in the barn. The work is done. Um, I get to do this. This is a, a thing that I chose to do. Like, I'm not sitting behind a desk. I'm not, you know... I don't know, a nurse, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer. This is my job. I'm a fighter. This is what I chose to do, and I'm very blessed to do it. And um, even, even the shitty parts, you know, it's all a part of the journey, and it's all shaping me, molding me, and forming me into the best version of myself. So this is all fun for me. And for Holly Holm, what do we think of her as the, an opponent welcoming you to this new promotion? Yeah, I mean, I think she's... I... I don't say legend lightly, you know, I, I think that it takes a special kind of person to be a UFC champion, to be um, in the top 10 for so long, to be, to stay relevant and to evolve as much as she's evolved. She has a super high fight IQ, she's got excellent footwork, we know that she has a striking background, but um, she's evolved into a very well, well-rounded mixed martial artist and I think she's probably the toughest test in the division for me, so. Kayla, right here. Uh, obviously, there are fight fans that only watch the UFC. They don't really watch other promotions. So I'm curious, have, have you noticed that a lot of fans already knew who you were, or you, have you had to kind of introduce yourself to fans or, or anything like that? I think it's a mixture of both. There's been a lot of um, warm welcoming, and a lot of people have shown me a lot of love, and a lot of people are like, who the fuck is that guy? So... <laughs> It is what it is. And what do you make of uh, this UFC Bantamweight division? Because obviously in PFL, this wasn't your division, like you said. How, so I guess how closely did you follow the UFC in this division specifically? I mean, I watched. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a avid watcher. Like, you, if I'm not in the fight or if it's not a fight that interests me, I probably don't turn the fights on just because I got two kids and I'm in bed at like 9 p.m. <laughs> every night. <laughs> um, but I, I watch the division. I've been taking notice. I've been keeping my eye on the pulse, and <clears throat> they need a new queen. Right. Well, kind of going off of that, you know, Laura Sanko has said, like, you, you were what the women's division kind of needed, someone like this. So do you kind of feel like, like, do you agree with that, like, the type of fighter like you that is also can speak on the mic and fight like you do is what this division needed? Yeah. I mean, I think that, thank you, Laura. I agree 100%. I concur. Court is now in session. The queen has arrived, and uh, Saturday night's going to be, yeah, my coming out party. Everyone's going to be put on notice. So were you already planting the seeds with Rocky? You know, you kind of guys were tweeting back. I, yeah, I mean, I get it. Look, I get it. If I were Rocky, I'd, I'd fight, uh, what's her face, Juliana. too? Juliana, too. Yeah, if I, yeah, of course I'd be calling for that fight. And there's uh, two less quick ones for me, unrelated to your fight. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Max and Justin? Yeah. Um, well, I don't know Jamal super well, but I've met Alex now, and he's a terrifying individual. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm excited for that one. I think it's – they both have a lot of power, so um, it's going to be – you know somebody's going out. And same with – Justin and Max. I don't know Max that well, but I've known Justin actually. He was one of the first fighters I met when I signed with the World Series. 
and he's just crazy, like in all the best ways. You know, he's he's every fighter's like one of their favorite fighters for a reason. And Max too, he's beloved by the people and by the the fighters, by all of the UFC staff. So you know, he's a good human. It's hard to you don't want anyone to lose that one almost. You know, like it just sucks. But I'm expecting fireworks. Kayla, over here. Uh, right here, good to see you again. Um, I was wondering, uh, Ronda Rousey came out with the book. You obviously were on the judo team and obviously roommates. She talked about having concussions throughout her career. Were yeah. you aware of that or ever given a hint to that back when you guys were competing in around each other? Um, I know. I know that she had. I know that she had one concussion, but that's that's really. I can remember one time where she. I think she had a concussion um, at a tournament in Belgium, but that's that's the only one I recall. I'm, I wasn't her doctor, obviously. I was 16 and <laughs> trying to stay alive. <laughs> uh, to ask you about your career, how important is it for you to get that microphone potentially after a victory and kind of let everybody know that you are that new face to watch in this promotion? Um, I think it's more important to get my hand raised and, and to focus on that for sure. But I think you guys all know by now I, <laughs> I like to talk a little bit. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, I just go with the flow. Like if it, the adrenaline is usually pumping like so much after a fight. It's, so I'm excited to go talk some shit to Joe Rogan and let him know what's up. It'll be good. Last one. In a dream scenario, does this UFC run culminate in potentially bringing back Amanda for that big title fight? I mean, that would be fantastic. You know, I, I think that, yeah, I want to fight the best. I, I, she's the GOAT for a reason, and I would love for her to come back and get pissed off enough to to want to come back. So we'll see what happens. But first things first, Saturday night, Holly Holm. Kill okay, right here. All right, Kayla, down here to your right. Um, you gave a glowing review of Holly Holm there and her legendary status and what she's done in the sport. Are you happy to be thrown in at the deep end against such an icon of the sport so early into your career, UFC career? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm a veteran now, you know? I'm, I'm 17 fights in, and um, yeah, this is it. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be given easy fights or like, I, I want to get in and, and I want to be UFC champion by the end of the year. Thank you. Kayla, over here. Hey, um, you're all constantly being compared to Ronda Rousey and I'm wondering, is that something that you're proud of or something that kind of annoys you or maybe a little mix of both? Um, look, Ronda is a pioneer in this sport. She's the whole reason I'm sitting here today. So I'm never going to, I'm not going to take knocks at her or um, be insulted by it. I think the hardest part is that I'm my own person, right? Like, it, I don't know. I'm my own person. So we're, we're just different. But I have a lot of respect for her and I'm grateful for everything she was able to accomplish in this sport and to help grow it for women and shatter ceilings. And now my job is to stand on top of her shoulders and continue to do that. Hey, Kyla over here. So you are winner of uh, Judo 2015 in Georgia at Pilisi. And actually, can you talk about your transition, how good it works on you? like? Uh, from judo to, uh, be, uh, to go in, in MMA? Yeah, it was a big transition, you know, to go from just being thrown and to getting punched in the face is kind of a, it's a big change really fast. But to be honest with you, I love it. I loved everything about it, being a, an expert at something but a bit beginner all over again and having to figure out a way to make those two come together was um, was why I loved MMA. And I'm still learning every day, still growing, still getting better, still making changes and adapting and growing. So I always say that judo is my first love, but MMA is my real love. And last one, what's your opinion about Georgian judokas? Oh my God, they're beasts. <laughs> I love the Georgian team. They're awesome. I remember um, when I won the Georgian, the 
Grand Prix or World Cup, I can't remember what it was, the, in Tbilisi. Yes. There is a little boy, Nico, Nico maybe. I gave him my trophy. I want to. I would like want to find out if he's still doing judo because it was my tradition to always give my flowers and my trophy to a child in the crowd. So I want to know if he's still doing judo. But all the Georgian guys are like um, Lipertiliani. He's probably my favorite Georgian judoka. Yeah. Thank you so much. Kayla, okay, right here. Um, what up, Mike? Not too much. Your manager Ali had an interesting quote this week where talking oh, about your Jesus star power. Christ. Yeah, he said you uh, you could be Ronda Rousey on steroids. Maybe not the best choice of words. Thanks, Ali. Yeah. Um, the sentiment behind that comment, though, like in terms of your star power, do you do you kind of agree you can take things to another level here if you do the run you want to? I hope so. I mean, that's the goal. I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not comparing myself to anyone or anything. I'm my own person. I have my own path. I just try and keep walking it every day, one foot in front of the other. And the goal is not to be, I mean, look, of course, everyone wants to be a star. The goal is not to be a star. The goal is to be UFC champion and be so fucking good you can't ignore me. And then to use this platform to change the world how I want to, you know, like there's a steps to it. And really being a star isn't a piece of it. It's something that I guess everyone wants to talk about, but I just want to be so good that you guys have no choice but to call me the queen. Okay, thanks guys.
What's up? What's up, Jamal? Over here, to your left. What's going on? How are you, man? It's obviously uh, been a bit of a break, but you're back. Huge card, fight week again. How does it feel to be sitting up there again? Uh, it feels pretty good, man. It feels good. Just ready to get to Saturday, get in the cage, and get my hand raised. Yeah, and you had the little uh, interaction with Alex yesterday that kind of went around. Um, what did you take away from that? Anything, or was it all just good vibes? You wanted your, your signature on your jacket? Yeah, it was. Just, I just took away the fact that I appreciate him taking the time out to sign that for me. It was just something that I wanted to get from this week. You know, I'm just enjoying the time that, you know what I mean, just my time. You know, we, we life is but a vapor, so. I mean, enjoy it. This is one a very special moment, very special card, very special week and, and fight. And uh, I just want to take it in as much as possible. Yeah, and kind of along that theme, you've talked about you know your story and some of the difficult times you've come through in your life to reach a moment like this. Like, do you reflect and what you've been through, or do you do that after? Yeah, that's something for after. That's something to re yeah. Well, as you said, reflect on the job ain't done yet. Yeah. And just last thing for me, um, of course, endless speculation about the injury and the recovery and stuff. Do you remember the day during your rehab, whatever it was, where you got back in there and you're like, this feels right now. I'm, I'm ready to go towards a fight again. Uh, I've been feeling like I was ready to go for a while, you know, but, you know, I listen to the team. I listen to the doctors and. So I don't know. I can't really. I don't really have an answer for that. For the simple fact of I've been ready to go since I since I got hurt. When you get in the cage on Saturday, is that when you're only gonna hundred percent get that confidence back in it, or is that not even lingering in your mind? What? I don't even know what how you even came form that question from what I just said. What? No, fair enough. Am I only gonna get a hundred? That was strange. Jamal, talk to me about the mentality for this fight, right? You were the champion. You had to give that up through injury. You didn't lose that through a fight. So do you feel like on Saturday you're defending your title or are you using this as an opportunity to be the challenger, climbing to the top once again? I just feel like whoever wins Saturday night is the champion. That's just how I feel about it. Obviously, when everyone talks about Alex and his fighting style, the calf kicks is something that comes up again and again. I saw you post something on your TikTok sort of talking about those and making light of it. Do you have a strategy in mind for those calf kicks, or do you think, hey, he has to worry about what I'm doing, not the other way around? Um, I have a strategy for everything. You know what I mean? You should have a strategy for everything. You shouldn't want to get hit with anything. So, yeah, I plan on dealing with every weapon that he has. Obviously, you got to talk to your friend Israel Adesanya about Alex. Um, how good a resource was that just to be able to call him up and get some tips from him? Um, that's a... It's an invaluable resource to just be able to reach out and pick, pick, a little, pick at one of the best minds in combat sports and have him who's had more experience with Alex than I think anybody that Alex has ever fought. So it was good. It was a great conversation. Jamal over here. How's it going? What's up, James? Um, the rest of camp looked like it went really well. Um, I know you train with a variety of different partners. Are there any names that you train with that maybe we don't know about that uh, we should be knowing about in, in the gym? Um, you know, yeah, for sure. I'd love to get a shout out to my guy, uh, big dog, Brett Martin. Brett Martin has been my secret weapon for my camp since I since I came into the UFC and since we linked up. He's a he's a heavyweight. He's a he's a big boy. He don't he's a he's another guy who don't get any love just because of his physique and things like that, you know. You know, people talk about my body, bro's got a, bro's body's pretty tough. But uh his 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 abilities are are unmistakable and they're they're incredible. They keep me sharp. Um I'm always able to bounce things off of him and uh and learn learn with him and grow with him in the gym you know whenever he, whenever he comes in and he's and we're working we we get after it and he knows me pretty well now so he's able to actually shape out some other challenges and things like that for me and yeah he's been he's been invaluable i've also worked with a couple of the guys uh that were local from uh that fight for the bare knuckle uh, Mohawk, Mohawk Esteban uh, Rodriguez, and um, Eric Lozano, a couple of tough, like, you know what I mean, they're, they're, they're tough. Esteban's got, he's tall, long, rangy, and uh, <laughs> he, he, he fights. 
And uh, speaking of Michigan, um, how cool is it having Cody Brundage on this card? You both used to fight for Lights Out uh, Fighting or Lights Out Promotion. Um, have you spoken to him this week? I haven't seen Cody yet, uh, but yeah, that is actually actually pretty dope. Um, they asked me who I, who I wouldn't mind being in my locker room. I told them definitely uh, I, I would like to have Cody Brundage in my locker room. Um, it's 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 special. It's it's definitely uh, special. Just just that for me and him because he was the last fight before contender series he was on that card we were on the same card before i uh before i joined the ufc obviously i went went on contender series and uh ended up getting signed he went on contender series and um was later signed and now both on main card ufc 300 is <laughs> is wild so yeah that is pretty dope and just last one for me not looking past saturday but do you have kind of like a timeline of like how often you want to fight this year is it just about you know opportunities and location and all that like how do you sort of determine your schedule after after saturday if all goes well i haven't looked past saturday so i'm just focused locked in on saturday i want to make sure i get the the result that that i want saturday and that's the main focus jamal to your right uh, I noticed earlier you quoted Ecclesiastes saying that life is but a vapor. During this process from the injury now going into this fight, what do you feel like you've been taught most? That is even that even more so appreciate the moments. Yeah, appreciate the moments. Just it could have all been over. It really could have all been over for me. Um, there are people, there are athletes who have suffered this same injury who – had to had to call it call it a quits on their hopes and their dreams, and uh, I'm fortunate enough to now be in a time, and was in a position to where the best medicine available was available to me, and I was able to take advantage of that and use the resources to make my way back and come back in a time that people really just can't seem to believe. So, thank you, uh, Jamal. Jamal here. Uh, What's going you already on? you already fought and won uh, f against four Brazilians. Alex Pereira is the fifth, and it's a big name out of Brazil right now. How was the experience to deal to deal once again with the Brazilian audience on social media? The Brazilian audience is different than <laughs> the, uh, Alex's audience, so it's it's been a it's been a different experience this time. I'll say. And I would like to know from you, uh, if somebody told you three years ago that you would be headlining UFC 300, would you believe that? What would you think at that time? If somebody told me I'd be headlining UFC 300 at the time, um, I'd, I'd believe it. I believe it because I know myself and I know the, I know the uh, belief I've always, held in my, I've always held in myself. But it would have been, it would have got me hype. It would have definitely had me excited. You know, um, I don't know. I just always planned on being in these moments and being in this situation ever since I was a kid. Like, you can even ask my dad. My dad is here right now, you know. Um, just from the time I was a kid, I just always believed that I, whatever I did, I was going to be one of the best at it. For a time, it was football. For a time, it was basketball. But whenever I sat in on fighting, it was I, I knew I would be here in moments like this fighting for championships and able to have an opportunity to put myself up there with the greatest names to ever do it. Jamal Obi. I know the, there's a lot of talk about Alex Pereira's fast rise in MMA coming from the kickboxing scene, but it was just in 2019 when you won a contender series contract, and this time last year, you were originally supposed to fight in a fight night headline, and you got the short notice call to fight Glover, in which you won and became the first contender series graduate to do so and become champion. So do you think people are kind of putting to the side your fast rise in this sport into now ultimately headlining UFC 300 as well? I don't know. I don't care. It's like, that's not important at all. Fair enough. Like, he's, he's, he's a great fighter. He just, it's just, that was his opportunity to show his greatness. His opportunity came fast. And uh, he stepped up to the occasion, and that's good on him, you know. And I, I feel I've done the same with the opportunities that I've been given. So this is just that next opportunity. Fair enough. Yeah, I was just mentioning because, you know, you also went up through a fast rise. But that image when you and uh, Alex were looking at each other after you beat Glover went around in the lead up to this fight, did you ever imagine that that would be the root of such a thing like a UFC 300 main event? Uh, 
No, because it was just a handshake. <laughs> I was, he was over shaking my, my corner's hand. I went over and shook his corner's hand. So that's pretty much what that was. Thank you. But I did see that he could possibly be an opponent in, a, in the future. And I was excited for it. I wanted him to win. When I got hurt and I had to give up the belt, it was like, all right, what's the best course? What's the, what's the best that could happen now? Because somebody else is going to win the belt. Who better than Alex to win the belt? Like you know, y'all think he y'all y'all and he is, you know he's a he's one of the he's a two div he's the what two division glory champion two division UFC champion kickboxing great can, uh, hands of stone bad man just a monster dangerous scary dude he's he's all those things but watch what I do to him. Jamal, first and foremost, I like your shoe selection. Very nice. I'm not. Wait, wait. You know I tore my Achilles in, in this. In the, in the, uh, the gray ones, was, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was hard for me to put these on today. <laughs> it, uh, and is there any truth that, did you go to the same doctor as Aaron Rodgers? Yes. Well, Aaron Rodgers went to the same doctor as me. Ooh. Did you guys, uh, you mentioned that you played football. Did you guys have any conversations, you and Aaron? I know he's a big MMA fan. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I've never met Aaron, so I never, I never like talked to him or anything like that. No. Got you. Uh, the Jets could use somebody uh, like you to catch the ball. But uh, speaking of quarterbacks and Super Bowl, like UFC 300 is kind of like a Super Bowl big time. It's going to be a lot of focus on you. Um, on one of your fights on the walkouts, uh, I heard the commentators talking about your calmness and your coolness. Do you believe that you have that that clutch? Uh, the, the attribute, the, the trait that you can just come through in the biggest moments? Yeah, yeah, that's something I, I just know. I just trust myself. That's one of the biggest things that I hang my hat on is the fact that I know I'm, I know that just naturally I, I show up. It's who I am. It's what I do.
and not the right here. Obviously, you called for you know Money Moicano wants these these big events, these big moments. So I guess what are the emotions now that you do have a spot on this historic UFC 300 card? Uh, feeling great, UFC 300. Uh, great card, great opponent. I think it's a good opportunity for me. So uh, I'm just honored to be here. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think you guys were the last fight added to this card. So were you expecting to be on that card, or was it a surprise when they called you? No, it was a surprise. I was expecting to fight in UFC 301 in Brazil, or, or even uh, on the pay-per-view on London, on, on Europe. I was expecting that, because that, that, was, that, that would make sense. But guess what? They call me, and I'm here. Is this the better card to be on for you, 300, rather than those two other ones? Definitely, de definitely is a, is a card that I want to be. Of course, UFC 300, uh, on the prelims, several champions face each other, uh, like uh, Davidson Figueiredo and, and Cody Garbrandt, and I'm fighting on the same card. I wish it was on the main event. I wish it was on the main card, but guess what? It is what it is. And what do you make of Jalen as an opponent? Because obviously, I think we kind of expected you'd be fighting Patty because you guys were talking back and forth. So when they came with Jalen, what went through your mind? Uh, man, I don't, of course I, I wanted Patty because on the paper was the easiest fight, you know? The easiest fight and uh, I would get more, uh, more people know him. So th that's what it's about. But at the same time, I don't choose my, op my opponents and I, do, and I don't have, time to, to sit and wait, you know? So I'm 34 years old, I have to fight, I have to get money, I want money, UFC 300, what, uh, which card would be better to get money? Of course, Dana White gonna, gonna raise the bonus, so I want the bonus too. And let's go, I think it's a good fight for me, to be honest. Jalen Tony is tough, but I'm better than him. Did you have to bring anyone to train with, considering how tall he was and how long he is? Yes, I, would, I was training with some 170 guys, you know, tall guys, strikers, very hard to take down, and I will be ready. And I know you, you like to be critical sometimes of certain main events and the apex and everything, but for this pay-per-view, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, man, I when they first started to make the card, I was talking a lot of shit about the card, you know, especially because I was, I wanted to see like John Jones, Conor McGregor, but I think Alex Pereira, he's, he's becoming a star in UFC, and I think in the end of the day, the card could not get any better, and especially for Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, that's going to be a banger, that's going to be an amazing fight, and I, I'm glad that I will fight and then watch the fights. Actually, last one for me. Obviously, after your fights, you know, you call Moicano wants money. There's a lot of competition for these bonuses on this card. So I guess, how do you uh, separate yourself? How do you win on Saturday? To be really completely honest with you, I don't think I'm going to get the bonus. Even if I finish him, we have 13 fights, 12 champions, and it's going to be tough to, to have a fight better than Max Holloway and, and Justin Gage or... Sarukian and Charles Oliveira, or uh, Alex Pereira. I, I think that the card will be, will have a lot of finishes. So to be completely honest with you, I just want to get the W. I want to finish Charlie Turner and move on. Going off of that with the bonuses right here, I'm just curious, do you think that Dana should do something special for this card? Maybe give everybody who finishes the bonus? 100%. He should do that in every card. You know, it's hard to get a finish on the UFC, and I think if you do, you should get more money. But guess what? I don't, I don't make the business. I am just an employee, so whatever they do, I agree with. Back here, Hanato. Speaking of money, I know you have your YouTube channel. You have a ton of things going on outside of fighting. You have the Home of Fight podcast now. So I'm curious, what do you think are some of the best side hustles for MMA fighters? I think talk about of MMA is easy because I have been training since I was, I started training Jiu Jitsu when I was 10, so I know the sport. I, I, I compete professional MMA since 2011, so I have been in the game for a long time. And, but the problem is some fighters, they are dumb. 
<laughs> I don't know if you guys know, but some, some fighters, and I don't even speak English, but I, I am trying, but some fighters, they do speak English, but they are dumb, or, or sometimes they are lazy. But guess what? We don't have much time on this game. 15, 10, 10 15 years, and uh, I'm glad that you say huge shoot out shoot out to my channel, money my kind of channel, and huge shoot out to the podcast, uh, show me the money, me, Gilbert Burns, and Maddie, I'm doing, we're doing a great work, so if you guys want to check, check it out, great podcast. But uh, to answer you, depends on what you like to do. I like to talk shit, I like to, you know, to make some money, so what's better to do, than, what's better than do a podcast? Hey, Hinato, right here. Um, you mentioned your YouTube channel. And you've really connected with a lot of fans and become a lot more popular, but I know you've also taken a liking to MMA Guru. How much have you learned from him, and how much has that sort of uh, made up your channel? Uh, uh, at, at the beginning, I didn't know MMA Guru. I wasn't on the Twitch, tried to stream in some games, especially because I, I got injured, my, my knee was hurt. And then everybody on the chat was saying, hey, you have to, to see MMA Guru react to a video. And then, and then uh, I watched a video of him live talking about MMA. And I, and I did my point, and, and I, I called him several words. And then uh, after that, I start to, to, to watch his content. And then I moved to YouTube. And when I, when I did a video about fighters, he... he um, made a shootout, like he's, he sent people to my live and to my videos, and, and that helps my channel a lot. I think one thing people are not realizing that the, today is a new game, completely different. You see guys that don't have any uh, background on journalism, or they just, they, they just are on, on literally uh, their mom's basement, but they can connect with the, the, the public, and, and they do a great job, because they can Imagine that we're doing this, uh, this press conference right now, and now you, you guys have to edit and have to walk, and that's very hard. But, but for a guy on YouTube, he just take the video and, and talk shit about uh, you know, fighters and, and give his opinion. So I think uh, YouTube is going to get m much more popular in, in, in the next couple of years. And to be completely honest, he's doing a great job. You like him or not, everybody's talking about him. Is that something you'd want to do after your career is done, is do that full time, is just do YouTube commentary? I want money. <laughs> yeah. if, YouTube, if I make money on YouTube, that's good. If not, I will uh, try something else. But of course, I, I like to talk about MMA. It's easy for me to do the videos. I like to connect with, with the fans. And I like the fans, uh, like you say, uh, recognize me a little bit more. And I think it's a good situation. And just last one for me, a win over Jalen, especially a finish. Where does that put you in the division? Because Jalen's, you know, fought some really good opponents, got some good wins. He's very good. He's very good. But I will beat him on Saturday, and I will be on the top ten. And then we'll see. We'll see. I don't have an opponent in mind right now. But uh, definitely, I want to fight somebody on the top ten. I want to get closer to the title, and I want more money. And Otto right over here. Uh, Hinato, big press conference tomorrow. A lot of fans love listening to you talk. Do you have anything special planned when you get on the mic tomorrow? Not really. I never, I never try to plan anything, you know. I, I have my principles. I have something that some, sometimes I, I want to talk about. And uh, what I want to talk about, maybe tomorrow, maybe on the fight day, is... is uh, you have to get ownership of your life because back in the day I used to I used to I used to blame other people for my, for my faults you know I used to to give excuses for everything nowadays I am I, this has changed my life to be accountable of my actions you know if 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 I do something something go wrong that's my problem if if something if I do something something go right that's my, uh, that's my uh, actions too. So I, I wish people nowadays would care more about the accountability. I think that's my message. And then one more question to talk about what Bri brought up. You have your podcast, Show Me the Money, with Matt and Gilbert. Can you talk a little bit about what you guys do talk about? We talk about money and MMA, and we bring some fighters to... to 
to do the podcast we, do, we did with Jamal Hill. And it's a very good show. And if you are a degenerate that loves gambling, Maddie is a gambler. And, and he's doing a good job. On the other day, he hit a, a 46,000 parlay with $1,000. So motherfucker is making money. And if you like to, to your opinions about that, uh, watch the show. It's a very good show. And like the first video, we got almost 30K views like in, on the first video. And I think this podcast will be one of the biggest podcasts in, in MMA. We still need a lot of content in MMA, not generic stuff, like good stuff, good productions. And we're doing that on Show Me The Money. And Home of Fighting is doing a great job too. So it's a win-win situation for fighters. Just a quick one right here. When you talk about MMA and fights with Gilbert and other people like that, do you kind of see an, another perspective that you might have not seen when you're in the cage? Do you get to learn a bit more just breaking down fights? Yeah, it's different because when you're talking about MMA against a guy that doesn't do MMA or, or, or the fighter, you can see different opinions. And definitely that changed my mind in a in, in couple fights. And especially if you're talking with a guy that like to bet, it's not like uh, a fight, because uh, let's say uh, Armand Sarukian and, and Charles Oliveira, I, if, I, if I am giving my prediction, I will try to do like on the technical aspect, right? I will say he's good that, he's good here, and I think he, uh, one or another will win. But when the, when the guy likes to bet, he do like props and, and finishes on the second round and crazy stuff that I don't like. So. Uh, j just remember, I don't bet, you know, I just, I just go to the podcast and, and, and I gave my opinion about fight. Thank you so much. Right here. Uh, obviously, we've been talking about this fight against Whaley for quite some time, but now that you know it's fight week here on this milestone that is UFC 300, I guess what are the emotions now that you just have to weigh in and then fight on Saturday? Uh, you你跟伟力这场比赛其实之前大家已经讨论过很久了，那么最终成型在这场UFC三百的比赛，那你觉得这场比赛最终能在这个这场比赛里进行是自己是一个什么样的感想？ 我觉得这是我的第一场UFC的挑战冠军的比赛,而且我跟张老力打,这个时间和地点都是最完美的,也是UFC三百,太完美了。You know, this is my first title fight versus Weili in Las Vegas, UFC 300, the opponent timing location, everything is perfect. Well, kind of going off of that, I think a lot of people expected maybe you to fight on that Shanghai card when they had originally announced it, but was UFC 300 kind of always the original date that they had told you? So, you know, actually, I never lock my goal or up, upcoming fight on any location or date or like UFC 300, but we just get here. You know, I know good timing, perfect timing. Yeah, so we just make it happen. And speaking of Whaley as an opponent, uh, like Daniel Cormier has said, she might be the most athletic fighter he's ever seen. A lot of people think, you know, she's kind of this perfect, well-rounded fighter. I'm curious, how do you view her skill set in there? So, yeah, I'm talking about Whaley. 
很多人都说，包括 DC 也觉得他是最全面的选手，然后也很壮，运动能力也很强。那你觉得跟他相比，你自己是什么样的选手？嗯，他确实就是给大家，就是每场比赛打得很精彩嘛，给大家呈现的也是很强。但是我觉得我也很强，我也可以展现最棒的我。Yeah, really, so great fighter as every her fight she she showcases to everybody, but I also Believe myself. I'm also a good fighter, completed fighter. I think I will show you guys the best version of myself. And a lot of people, obviously, they they point to the fact that this is the first time two Chinese fighters are fighting for a title. Do you view the importance of this fight, or do you just view it as another card against a champion, and you're going for the title? So, 大家现在很多说到这场比赛都在说啊，这场比赛中国德比第一次有中国选手争夺这个冠军腰带。那对你来说，这个重要吗？还是对你来说，其实？争夺 UFC 腰带，拿到 UFC 冠军是更重要的事儿。我觉得都重要，但是让我选的话，还是拿到冠军是最重要的。Yeah, both the China versus China and、uh, get the UFC title are important to me. But if you let me choose one, which one is more important, get the title. And、uh, last one for me.、Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal and the BMF fight between Justin and Max? 那你预测一下另外两场腰带战吧，那个佩雷拉和希尔，然后霍洛威和盖奇。呃，盖奇和霍洛威的话，我喜欢盖奇，他的打拳我特别喜欢。完了，我选盖奇。完了，还有佩雷拉。So for Gay Justin Gaethje and、uh, Max Holloway, I would pick Gaethje because I I like his boxing. So yeah, I think Gaethje can win. And、uh, for the main event,、uh, Pejera.、Uh, Jan, last time we spoke,、uh, after your last win in May, we talked about this potential title fight, and you said that the people in China maybe don't support you as, not, as much as、uh, Wali.、Uh, have you felt that sentiment change now that this is booked? Now that you're in this title fight, like, do you feel like people are coming around to you at home more than they were before? 去年五月，你赢了安德拉德之后呢？他问过你，就接下来如果冠军战打伟力。会怎么样？然后你也提到了，可能中国的粉丝可能更多人会支持伟力。那现在你觉得大家这个支持度，你们两个相比有什么变化吗？还是怎么样？嗯、呃，没有变化，还是更多人支持他。但是我有我的家人和我的朋友，还有我的教练团队支持我。Nothing has really changed. Still more people support Weili, but you know, I have my family, I have my team. All the people, my people, will support me. To me, that's enough. Jan, I was wondering last year, what was it like training with the LA Rams? Ah, he said you 之前是去那个洛杉矶公羊那橄榄球队跟他们。Yeah, yes. Yeah, she visited the, the practice, the training camp there. How was the experience? And you 觉得那个体验怎么样？看公羊的训练，我我感觉太酷了，之前我都没见过。Yeah, it's super cool. I never saw or participated any American football training before.
morning. Take over here. Uh, obviously, a uh, massive card here, UFC 300. I feel like you've kind of become one of these fan favorites, so when they announced this, that you had been on UFC 300, people were excited. But I guess for you, I guess what does it mean to be here uh, at UFC 300? I think, I believe the only Mexican on this, on this card. Tremendo favorito, obviamente, um evento histórico. E você se tornou um fã, um, um, um favorito dos fãs. Todo mundo te quer, muito legal ter você aqui. E você é o único que representa o México, né? É, é algo, algo muito bom, né? Estar tá lutando no UFC 300, eu acho que é uma oportunidade muito boa para minha carreira. É, ainda mais pelo pouco tempo que eu levo dentro do UFC. Então, acho que eu tenho feito as coisas bem. E poder representar o Brasil e também ser o único representante de habla hispana aqui representando o UFC 300, isso me, me hace sentir muito grato. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity, such a great event and a great opportunity for my career. So that means that I've been doing things right, especially with the short time that I've had in the UFC. And, and to have the opportunity to represent not only Brazil, but also be the only representative of, of, of Spanish-speaking country. Uh, so I'm very happy and very grateful. Well, to kind of go off of that, you know, you had a lot of fights before you even got into the UFC, and you know, now you're fighting in Madison Square Garden, now you're fighting UFC 300. Did you think that you would kind of rise in popularity this quickly in the UFC? E meu que montando em cima do que você falou, você teve muitas lutas antes do UFC. De repente você chega e você já está lutando em Madison Square Garden, já está lutando no UFC 300. Você imaginou que essa essa é a tua trajetória? Então, acho que tudo tem acontecido muito rápido, né? Para mim também foi uma surpresa, mas como eu bem mencionei na pergunta passada, eu acho que eu tenho feito as coisas bem e isso tem me trazido até aqui, né? Então, acho que muito só só agradecido com o UFC por todas as oportunidades que me está dando e eu sou um cara que trabalha duro todos os dias para lograr essas oportunidades. Uh, as I, listen, it, it was, it was, there was a, a surprise to, to everything happened, but as I mentioned in, in, in as my last answer, like this is the I do think that I've, I've done a lot of things that, that that means I've been doing a good job, um, and that's what brought me this opportunity. So just again, very happy and very grateful for the UFC to have given me this opportunity. When they came to you with the name like Sadiq, did you like that matchup, and what do you think of his skill set? Quando chegaram para você com o nome como Sadiq, isso falar não se impor. Gostei desse casamento. Que que você, que que você, que que você achou da, da oferta do nome dele e o que como é que você vê o, o, o casamento dessa luta? Pode falar em espanhol? Claro, como você quiser. Pois, a mim me gostou muito. Eu, eu a mim me gosta das peleias mais difíceis dela divisão. Este eu creio que se alguém quer ser campeão, pois é que pelear com os mais duros da categoria, não? Então, se, esse é o meu objetivo. Esse é pelear com os mais duros. Eu Yo recuerdo que el año pasado hice una entrevista y me preguntaron con quién me gustaría pelear y yo dije que justamente con Sudik o con Alex Cáceres y me llegó la oportunidad de pelear con Sudik y pues bueno, este, me gusta la pelea, estoy listo para eso. Um, I, I really like the opportunity. Actually, I like the fight because, I mean, he's a tough guy, one of the best guys in the division. And I said this, if you want to be a champion, I mean, you have to fight the biggest guys and the, 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 the toughest guys in the division. And actually, last, last year, uh, in, during an interview, people asked me, who would you like to fight? And I said, Sodic or Alex Caceres. And there you go. They got me him. So I'm very happy about the opportunity. Why specifically did you like the matchup with Sadiq at the time? Y por qué entre los dos, o sea, específicamente te gustaba en cuando te preguntaron en la entrevista el año pasado por qué te gustó Sadiq específicamente? Pues Sadiq justamente por eso es uno de los peleadores más duros de la división. Es el peleador que nunca ha sido finalizado dentro de la categoría. Las únicas dos derrotas que tiene ha sido por decisión para una de la de la leyenda de deporte como es Edson Barbosa y por Arnold Allen que es el número 7 de ranking. Este, eu sei que é um peleador que vai para adelante buscando o final das suas peleias e isso é o que me gusta. Um, I think you talk about a, a guy who's never been finished in the UFC. I mean, he's got two uh, losses, one of them to a legend in the game, and that's Barbosa, and one has been seventh in the ranking. I mean, this is a guy just a, a, a tough challenge, and that's the type of stuff that I like. Did you know he's a voice actor for Disney too now? E sabia que está haciendo voice acting, o sea, está prestando su voz a películas de Disney ahora? Sí, algo así vi, pues la verdad es que, que bueno por él, ¿no? Este, lo felicito pues, por, por ese gran logo que tiene. O sea, es algo que yo creo que nosotros peleadores siempre no, nos gustamos algo aparte del deporte, ¿no? Entonces, si a él le gusta este, prestar su voz para lo, lo, las películas animadas, pues qué bueno, feliz por él y pues lo felicito. Uh, but yeah, I've seen it, uh, and I'm very happy for him because, you know, for all of us fighters, we, we, I think all of us have interests outside of the world of fighting. So if he had the opportunity to, to, to you know, to lend his voice uh, to animated features, I'm very happy for him, and I congratulate him on it.
And last one for me, can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Y obviamente, eh, mi última pregunta, mi parte de José, pensamientos generales de la, pe de la pelea eh, estelar entre eh, Pereira y Gil y también el BMF entre Justin Gage y Max Holloway. Ah, son, son dos luchas que todo el mundo quiere ver. Né? Sí. Acho que la lucha con co Justin Gage y Max Holloway son luchas impressionante, né? Acho que são dois caras que levam muito tempo dentro da empresa, são dois caras que merecem ter essa ter essa luta que eles estão tendo agora, né? Eu acho que Max Holloway tem lutado com quase todo dentro do UFC, o Justin Gate também. Então, é uma luta que eu estou emocionado para ver, eu quero sair da minha luta, me colocar na frente da TV e estar tá preparado para ver a luta do Max Holloway contra o Justin Gate e a luta do Pereira contra o Rio. Acho que é uma luta que pode acontecer de tudo, né? Pode acontecer uma surpresa também de Jamal Hill pues, acabar conectando uma mão ali, porque sabemos que nos pesos mais, mais pesados, é, tudo pode acontecer. Uh, I think, I mean, the, the fight between uh, Gagey and Holloway, you talk about two guys that have been around this organization for quite some time, giving us great fights. I mean, Max Holloway has pretty much fought everybody in this, in this company, and Gagey's been around too, so it's a fight that, you know, I'm really... I'm emotional about this one. I really want to finish my fight and be able to watch watch that fight. So I think everybody should be expecting a great fight. And that's for, uh, for uh, Pereira Hill. I mean, it, it, this is a fight that a surprise could happen because you never know if at one hand, I mean, Jamal could connect his hand. I mean, the heavier you get, uh, the more the opportunity of one hand just changing the game. So anything can happen. You go over here. Una en español rápido. Um, has estado ayudando al equipo Alexa Grasso en el Ultimate Fighter antes de, de tu pelea de UFC 300. ¿Cómo ha sido esa experiencia y el entrenamiento aquí en Las Vegas antes de una ocasión tan grande como UFC 300? And Diego, you've been in the actually Grasso team for uh, the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, you've been around here. We've seen you in the team. Uh, how has been? How's that experience been of being a part of Tough? Ha uh, sido una experiencia muy 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 buena. Este siento que he aprendido bastante también y conciliar pues este ser se ayudar pues mi equipo este como con el coach de Tofi como como estoy haciendo con Alexa y entrenar también pues me ha ayudado bastante no es algo que yo he hecho desde siempre en mi carrera siempre he ayudado a mis compañeros mis alumnos y he, y he peleado y he entrenado para mí también pero lo que más me me motiva y me deja feliz de todo eso es saber que todo mi equipo está acá en Las Vegas desde hace un mes junto conmigo y trabajando pues para eso uh, it's been a great experience. I mean, just to just be a part of the team and then be a, 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 have an opportunity to, to, to see the process of coaching, just like, you know, i uh, able to actually uh, be in the, in, in, in the coaching side with Alexa. Um, I have done this throughout my life, I'm always teaching people, and I've, I've done it since, since the start of my career, um, being on the coaching side. But the cool thing and the most roaring thing is the fact that I've been in Las Vegas here with all my team. All of us have been here for the month, so all together, so that's very rewarding. Y después de esta pelea, ¿has hablado de la posibilidad de potencialmente uh, pelear en UFC 306 en la esfera aquí en Las Vegas para la noche de independencia de México? And after this one, have you talked about the opportunity or have you con uh, considered the opportunity of fighting here 306 September, Mexican Independence Day at the Sphere? Uh, Creo que sí, o sea, es lo, es lo que busco, ¿no? Yo busco las grandes oportunidades. Si UFC me da la, la oportunidad de pelear en la esfera de este, UFC 306, este, pues yo estoy listo. Yo estoy listo, la verdad, pues representar todo, todo el pueblo brasileño y pues también toda la, la gente de México, que pues es el día de la independencia de México, para mí va a ser algo muy significativo. Um, of course, uh, it, it, I've, I'm always looking for good fights, looking for great opportunities, looking for the big ones, and that's a, that's a great opportunity too. And uh, if the UFC comes calling, I mean, for me to have the opportunity to represent Brazil and also be there uh, for the Mexican people representing Mexico in is such a, an important weekend uh, for Mexican to be awesome. And a message to all the Latin American fans that are going to be watching you on Saturday. No, pues ya saben, puede esperar a Diego que siempre va para adelante buscando finalizar sus peleas. Ese es mi objetivo. Gracias por toda la gente de Latinoamérica que me apoya, la gente especial en México. Este, pues bueno, aquí estamos para representar. Oh, well, you know, uh, uh, you're going to see a Diego that's always pushing forward, always looking for the finish, always giving his all. So, and also, thank you so much for the support. Uh, we'll always be there for you. Diego, aquí. A gente tem o Charles e o, o Poatan né, no card junto com você. E como todo mundo falou, você já é um potencial astro, quem sabe astro do UFC campeão. O que, que você consegue 
O que, que você acha que você pode aprender com a história do Charles do Poitão dentro do UFC que você pretende seguir na tua trajetória? Você vai no mesmo card que você tem. Você tem Charles Oliveira e você tem Alex Pereira Poitão. Um, every, todos já consideram a sua história e você vai se tornar uma maior estrela no dia. Então, o que você pode aprender das histórias e da história de Charles Oliveira e Alex Poitão para a sua vida? Ah, acho que a gente pode aprender muito, né? São dois caras que inspiraram bastante pessoas dentro do dentro do esporte, né? No Brasil em geral. É, eu tenho a oportunidade de conhecer o Potan desde 2015. É um tempo que eu morei em São Paulo. A gente teve um, a gente pôde treinar um pouco junto também. A gente se conheceu lá. E o ano passado ter a oportunidade de lutar no mesmo card que ele no UFC 295 foi algo incrível, né? Eu pude encontrar ele aí várias vezes dentro do dentro do hotel. A gente trocou uma ideia, conversou e logo também pois o Charles, né? O Charles, todo mundo sabe a história do Charles, é um cara que tem batalhado bastante para conquistar tudo o que ele tem hoje, né? E, e ter esses dois caras como referência para mim é algo muito bom, é algo muito bom, algo que motiva bastante também. Eu me espelho neles porque eu sei o que eu tenho passado na minha vida também para ter tudo o que eu tenho agora. É, e estar e tá hoje aqui compartilhando a carteleira do UFC 300 com eles é algo, algo incrível para mim. E muito feliz, cara, muito feliz dessa grande oportunidade. E espero poder fazer jus com o que o pessoal está tá projetando para mim no futuro. Um, these are guys that have inspired people um, in, in the fight game. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to actually uh, just kick it around with Poatam. I met him back in 2015. We trained together. So when I was in São Paulo, I trained with him. Uh, also, for I had the opportunity to fight uh, in the uh, same card as his in 295 in New York. And actually, we got we were able to, to exchange some words. And, I mean, just such a great guy. He's becoming a star, a bigger star every day. And about Charles, everybody knows the story of Charles. I mean, all the stuff that he's gone through, all the things that he didn't know how much he's battle to actually get the things that he did. Um, I, I know myself, I know how much I've battled and what I've had to go through to have, um, uh, to, to conquer and, and to, to get the space and where I am right now. And all I want is, I mean, obviously these guys are such an inspiration. Um, I hope to, 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 to continue my path just like them, they are, and, and I hope to do justice to, uh, uh, to, to what these guys have been doing for us. Thank you guys. I promise the next time my request in English. Max, welcome to Fight Week, but not just any Fight Week, UFC 300 Fight Weeks. You know, you've been atop of these amazing cars before, you've been in title fights before, but does this one feel a little bit extra special? For sure, you know, first things first, you gotta ask Connor, what are you laughing about on your comment, brother? Yeah, I did see that, I didn't yeah, know what's... Yeah, 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 go ask him, go ask him what are you laughing about. Hopefully you can get Lucky Charm shorts or something. Good for him, you know? We are talking, of course, about the floral pattern shorts you've got for this fight. Um, yeah, did post it, Connor did put a laughing emoji on it, but curious how you feel about being able to rep them in the octagon. I loved it. I loved it, man. I loved it. You know, it came, it, it came together real quick. Being able to use it here at UFC 300, I'll, hopefully, uh, hopefully they leave it for me so I can keep using it every fight. So we see what happens. Do you think that's important for athletes to be able to represent themselves and, and sort of express themselves on ways other than just, you know, their fights? I think it's cool. Yeah, I think I think it's a great way. You know, put it, put a little flavor in it. You know, I guess so. I understand the whole uniform look because we're trying to you know go after like you know follow other major sporting leagues. So at the end of the day, I get it. But to have your own, uh, you have your own flavor, and finally I get mine. It's I mean the people wanted it. You know what I mean? Tell where's Hunter? Where's Dana? Tell them tell them the numbers of the sales because I I want to see. I'm pretty sure that floor shorts is popping. Justin Gaethje, right? Obviously a phenomenal fighter. BMF, 
when this fight was announced, I saw the reaction with someone was like, oh, he hits too hard for Max. You know, a guy who's never been dropped before in the octagon. When you see those comments and people apparently being concerned for you and about your career after this fight, do you just think, okay, well, we'll see on Saturday? <laughs> we find out. We find out. You know, that's the beautiful thing. Every time uh, I did any of these interviews, go watch it all fight week. Every time they ask me what is, you know, what is the main thing, what is, when you come to think of Justin, what do you think of this fight? I think of violence and uh, this happens, you know, I smile, you know, I smile. This is, this is what Real Fighters is about. Uh, Justin's a BMF. The beautiful thing is everybody has questions and uh, they, we have the answers come uh, UFC 300, Saturday night. Uh, I've been watching your YouTube channel, great content on there. I recommend everyone go watch it. You've been showing yourself bulking up for this fight a bit more than you did for that Dustin fight. How do you feel now walking around ready for a lightweight title fight? Brother, I mean, it is what it is. You know, I, I talked about this earlier today. I hate talking about it, but, you know, that Dustin fight was, it is what it is. You know, I, <laughs> my, my manager is calling me Muffin Top Max, this whole camp. You know, so at the end of the day, that's what it was, you know, for this fight. And we wanted to put on the right weight. We wanted to put on the... We wanted to be smart, we wanted to be strong, but we still wanted to be fast, so I, I think we found, found a, a very even ground, and uh, you guys get to see come uh, Saturday night. There was a, a quote from your coach on one of your video blogs where he said, uh, Max already has a BMF belt and it's in his chest. Mm. Do you think, comparing your skills to Gaethje's, that this could come down to whose heart is bigger, and do you think you beat him in that category? We see what happens, you know, we see what happens. I think a, a true BMF is a guy who, you know, who who's willing to fight and go in there like gladiator days, you know, and he said it before, if he was, a, like I said, when I'm a gladiator, he said it in gladiator, he, he would have fight to the death, you know, in a coliseum, so the beautiful thing is uh, we get to find out, man, we get to find out, attrition is going to be a big thing in this sport, I believe, uh, in this fight with him, and um, we get to find out. Max, we're here. Just one last quick one on the jump up to lightweight. Um, was that a conscious decision after the Dustin fight, like coming off of that? Like, if I ever go back up to lightweight, I have to approach this differently, or was that just a change right now for the Dustin? I mean, the Dustin time, I, I hate talking about it. I hate saying it. We just, they came with an opportunity, and opportunities like that, you cannot, you cannot, you, you do not say no, you know? It was just a time thing. With the Justin one, I think it was like six weeks or whatever, and if you count down the two weeks that you, you, you kind of come down from training week. That's like a four week, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, real fighters stay ready, like I always said. And I felt like I was ready. If you go watch that Dustin fight, there's a couple of things that I had to change and, you know, the outcome is different, you know what I mean? And now we had 10 weeks, 10, 11 weeks. I don't know what it is for this fight. You guys get to see the difference, you know? Uh, uh, a lot of people like looking in the past. A lot of people like searching for stuff. They keep forgetting what's right in front of them, you know? And you guys are going to see come uh, Saturday night. Justin has uh, obviously famously declared himself the most exciting fighter in the UFC. I'm curious, do you agree with that, or do you kind of put yourself uh, above that? I mean, uh, how are you going to disagree with him? The guy had, what, 12 fights in the UFC, 12 bonuses? Brother, I, that speaks for itself. It is what it is. Uh, I, I, I'm just excited to be sharing the octagon with him come UFC 300 on a big event like this. When you got, when you got a card like this, the spotlight like this on us... Uh, being the people main event already, you know, I think we can still show the UFC pushing, pushing. Every time I see an ad on UFC for UFC 200, it's me and Justin. So at the end of the day, I, my Tim, Tim, Daniel, someone needs to get on the phone with Dana and Hunter, and we've got to talk numbers about some things because uh, it's looking kind of funny. And Justin said that uh, I think the ideal scenario for him would be doctor stoppage because he doesn't really want to put you out cold because he has respect for you. So I'm curious, what do you think of that prediction? I mean, it's cool, you know, it's cool. I, I don't want to put the man out cold either, but it's the fight game. That's what we love, you know. Like I said, for 25 minutes, I'm going to go in there. He's going to come for my neck. I'm going to come for his neck. And, uh, you know, after we can hug it out, you know, go get a beer. I, I mean, I don't drink beer. He can get his beer. Maybe I get a shot with him and, uh, you know, we get a pizza or something. And last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event between Alex and Jamal? I think it's going to be a fun one. I think a lot of people are calling out Jamal just because he only as good as your last fight. And Jamal's last fight was what? Like, I don't know, how long was he out? 15 months, brother. Like, nobody even cares, you know? That's just what it, that's just what it is, you know? And then the, you see him posting funny videos, and everybody keep hating on him. Like, us fighters don't have a life outside of training. So, at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a crazy fight. Both of them have, have, uh, have, have crazy power. You know, everybody talk about Alex's power. Uh, and I, I, I think Jamal has that crazy power, too. I'm not saying he... He made the man. He made the man in Johnny Walker do like something crazy after getting hit. That's that, that was kind of amazing. So, 
I think it's going to be a tough fight, man. It's a, it's a pick em fight. It's a coin toss. And um, I'm glad that I, I get to be here and witness it. Max, people were uh, very excited by your idea to have Mark Coleman wrap the title. Justin was in full agreement. Any update? Is this going to happen on Saturday? I didn't see it. I didn't see it. But I heard he's going to be here. And I, he'd probably be in Dana White's section, right? So, I mean, even if, if he's there, maybe if I see him or Justin see him, maybe we just tell him, go, go in the cage. You know, who's going to stop? Who's going to stop him from entering the octagon? You know, good luck. Justin also said he wants uh, three hundred thousand dollar bonuses for this for UFC three hundred. Um, can you use some of your sway? You've been here for a long time. Are you gonna? Oh yeah, brother. I'm going. I'm going to. When we did a fighter meeting, we always have fighter meeting. I'm going to throw it out there. I'm going to say five hundred k, so we can we can start. You know, like we can start going back. Okay, at four hundred and three hundred. I'm like final offer one hundred fifty. Come on, this is UFC three hundred. It's huge. The two guys that is pushing the the pushing the fight is asking for. It. Why not? You know. Yep, I agree. And I remember you said at one point when you were growing out the hair that you were never going to come into a fight week with short hair again. Why did you change your mind? I mean, just because you guys said <laughs> a lot of people is forgetting who Max Bless Holloway was. They, they need a reminder. UFC 300 was a, was a time, and uh, you guys are about to see a whole different animal, you know? Max, hey, Max right here. Uh, Max, so uh, I saw on your Instagram you built the Max Holloway Fitness Center and the Why Night Clubhouse for the Boys and Girls Club. I mean, obviously as a guy who's been very impacted by martial arts, what did it mean to you personally to be able to give back to your community at that level? It meant a lot. You know, I mean, being able to give back to my community at the Why Night Boys and Girls Club was huge. I always wanted to do something for my community, so it meant a lot. They, I'm also, they also gave me the Health and Fitness Ambassador of the Boys and Girls Club, so that was huge. But to be able to have that little gym spot in there, to have kids uh, uh, train safe and be smart and, and do the right decision, you know? Like when we went open, I told the kids, a lot of them is scrappy already, you know? So hopefully we can, we can uh, grab that energy, grab all that energy and put it in the right direction, you know? Hopefully five, 10 years, 15 years, some kid from that gym that started that gym or even just touched and trained in that gym might be sitting in front of you one day, and uh, that would be uh, mission complete. Max, and then my back here. You've already left such a strong legacy at Featherweight. I really don't know that you have anything left to prove there. Is lightweight going to be your new weight class, or do you plan on going back down to 145? Uh, we see what happens. We see what happens. You know, in this sport, having options is always good. You know, and uh, first things first is Justin Gaethje. But um, there, there, there's a fun fight down there that uh, a man keeps talking and I keep hearing, you know. So my only advice to that guy is, like, uh, when the contract come up, sign the dotted line. Don't make no excuses. Max, over here. You fought here in Ninth Island many different times, but this occasion, right? Where does this occasion rank amongst all the times you fought here in Ninth Island, given the magnitude of the event? Oh, this is huge, bro. This is huge. This is the hugest. This is UFC 300. What more can I ask for? Like I said, every time we fight in Hawaii, you guys, uh, every time we fight in Las Vegas, the Ninth Island, you guys see all the Hawaiian flags. You know what I mean? And uh, being UFC 300, being this big, being on a card like this, being on a history card, it's... It's going to be huge. You guys are going to see a Hawaiian flag swarm that damn arena, like always. And uh, I'm just blessed to be a part of, the, a part of this. And other than that Box. short amount of preparation from that last fight against Pori at 55, are there any things from that specific fight that you can take as learning experiences in order to get your hand raised this time fighting at 55? Not really, man. Dustin, Dustin, and uh, Dustin and Gage is two different animals, you know, two different beasts, two different fighting styles, two different stances. So... And two different ways of attack, so we see what happens, you know. I, 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 feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a vet in this game. I fought a who's who, and um, at the end of the day, this is another guy up there that I got to figure out when I get in there. So we find out UFC 200. Max over here. So if you get BMF title, probably next matchup for you is the new champion, Lea Topuria. And what do you think about that? Questionable. That's it. Uh, questionable. That guy, everybody keep asking me, what do I think of Topuria? Uh, yeah, fighting Topuria. He's questionable. I, 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 I'll fight him. You go ask him that question. Ask him that question about me. At the end of the day, UFC, I always wanted to fight for the title. I always want to do this. A lot of contenders, they gave me, they gave me a lot of up-and-coming contenders, and then there's one that didn't come up to, to, towards my way. So you can ask UFC about that. You can ask him the question.
lot of people. It's like we got a big event this weekend or something. We do. And uh, Aljo over here, big fight for you, obviously. Um, how does it feel right now, Wednesday morning, compared to if you were preparing for a bantamweight fight? It's, uh, man, it's night and day. You know, <laughs> we were talking about the weight cut. I was like, it's almost laughable for me. Um, it's still not easy, but compared to what I was doing before for so many years, this is almost like a cakewalk. I, I, obviously, I don't want to underplay it. It's still going to be a tough weight cut because I'm still super lean. Um, but I got like 15 pounds, which is a lot nicer than having 25. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you said the other day, I think you tweeted it being like, I'm either going to you know, look fantastic or I might look terrible, but like, I'm willing to be that guy who rolls the dice. And that's been the case with you throughout your career. Um, but right now, like, do you feel like this is going to be a better version of yourself or is it too, too soon to know? We're going to find out Saturday night. I, I really don't know. I think the training has been looking great. Uh, we've gotten a lot of good matchups in the, in the training room, a lot of good feedback. I think over, all in all, we've been doing some really good stuff. And I'm proud of the work we put in. And I just got to go out there and perform. And I think if I do that, the best version of myself shows up. And I, I really always talked about this at 35. Um, but I was a little bit more green back then. But there's a lot that I feel like I haven't been able to show in the octagon just because of energy consumption, the weight cut. Um, I think now we're going to get to see a lot more of the, the flashy stuff and get back to the real funk. And facing Calvin Cater, who's long layoff, serious knee injury, um, you're never shy to throw an oblique kick, shoot for a takedown, things that you would assume would test the durability of his knee. Um, is that something you think about? Like, where is this guy going to be at physically? Nah, hopefully he's healed up, man. I, I don't wish any injuries or anything like that for any of these athletes. It's, it's hard enough trying to, trying to win a fight in the UFC, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully Calvin's 100% coming into this with his, his knee injury, and uh, I'm going to do what I got to do. It's not, I'm not trying to maliciously attack his knee. It's like, oh, I'm going to destroy your knee. Like, nah, I don't have any intent like that. I'm just going to use my grappling, use my kicks, use my, my punches. I'm fighting him everywhere and anywhere the fight goes. And where does a win here kind of put you in this division, do you think? Do you think there's any chance with, you know, Max doing this BMF fight, uh, Volkanovski potentially wanting to take some time off, could you backdoor your way into a title shot with one win? I think so. I think if Max goes out there, he wins. I think I go out there and I win and I look good doing it. Uh, Ilya Tapori already said what he said. He said there's no challenger, so why not just skip the line instead of uh, getting in the tough gauntlet of a queue. Um, they, I mean, you'll see, they do what they want, right? So if they offer you a title fight, you'd be kind of crazy to tell them no. So if I go out there, do my job, I look good on a huge, massive card, I think the rest will take care of itself. I'll do right here. Uh, just even outside of fight camp, is just life better in general? You know, not having that massive weight cut to 135, even when you know you're not preparing for a fight? Yeah, stupid questions don't irritate me as much. You know, so it's a lot nicer. I could talk to my friends and family. I even, I'm in a group chat and they're like, wow, you're talking on a Monday? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, he's like 145 hits different. I'm like, yeah, very, very different. It's uh, night and days, not even comparison. Like normally on this Wednesday, I would need to be about 145 pounds in order to be in striking distance. Uh, this morning I was 154.2. Um, so I was kind of, like I said, I don't want to underplay it, but it just feels like I don't want to say cakewalk, but it's a lot easier, nicer, and um, I can enjoy life a little bit more, which I think will give me some longevity in the sport a little bit more than 135. Uh, back in the day when Dustin made the jump from featherweight to lightweight, he said it took maybe a fight or two to feel like an actual lightweight rather than just a featherweight that stopped cutting weight to get to lightweight. Do you feel like an actual featherweight in there, or do you still kind of feel like a, just a bigger bantamweight? I don't know. I, I'm not going to know until I get in there with Calvin. I mean, I've been sparring with big 45ers, Julian Rosa, Dennis Bazookia, uh, Anthony Delemi, um, Kai Kamaka, Danny Gay. I've been, been getting some good rounds. Timmy Kwamba, who just got signed. And these guys, are they're not small dudes. So I like to think I've been having some pretty good rounds, some pretty good looks. And I think that's that gives me the confidence, you know? I, I do think Calvin might look at me like, oh, it's the little guy coming up. But... This little guy is strong, so uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I don't think he's overlooking me. I'm not overlooking him. I think this is a tough fight for both of us, and it just comes out to uh, who shows up on the night.
And I think I saw an interview where you said you expected maybe a top five guy right away, but Calvin was the name they gave to you. Is there any thought of maybe waiting for those other featherweight fights to play out, or was kind of the, the allure of UFC 300 that pulled you to this fight? Definitely UFC 300. But um, I, to wait, I'm only getting older. I don't want to wait much longer. Like, even my last fight, I asked for just an extra month so I could heal up my injuries first before getting into a training camp and, and trying to makeshift the training camp. You know, but it, that's come and gone. Um, I'm already feeling like this was too long of a layoff. I think I had three grappling matches in the time, the time off. You know, I like to be active. There was a point in my career where I had five fights in one calendar year uh, in a 12-month span, you know. So uh, I think this is the start of something fresh and new, and uh, I'm looking forward to being active as long as I'm injury-free, being active and competing as much as I can, trying to make as much money as I can, and hopefully fighting for a world title by the end of this year. And the featherweight division obviously has a lot of high-level strikers, but they also have guys like Brian and Bryce Mitchell and Mobzar who are all high-level grapplers as well. So do you think just the addition of you to this division, do you kind of put yourself at the top of that as like the better grapplers at 145 now? Yeah, I'm not going to toot my own horn. I, I think I'm pretty good, and uh, I think those guys think they're pretty good. Um, I think our grappling is just a little bit different the way we use it. So it just comes to see who can blend it the best. I, I think um, I do things just a little bit differently than those guys. And even in Tapori, he's, he's got some solid grappling that he hasn't really shown, but the guy can grapple. Um, you know, I'm not naive to know who's the best grapplers in this division. And um, with that said, I let the fans decide who they think is the best grappler and go from there. And last one for me, two quick ones. Uh, can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Main event, man, that's a tough one. You know, but I'm rolling with my guy, Jamal Hill. I think that's a really tough fight. Obviously, he's coming back from a big injury. Um, Poetan is on a huge wave right now, and he, he's got the momentum. Of course, Jamal just had an injury. He never lost the momentum. So it's going to be fascinating to see who imposes their game plan first. I think Jamal's better when it comes to striking with the hands. I think uh, Poetan's got some really good calf kicks that Jamal just needs to be careful of, and I think if he can negate that with his reach, switch stance, uh, I think it should be a good night for him. And if he wants to grapple, he can actually grapple. Uh, I don't know how good Pereira's grappling is or his wrestling, and I think that's going to be the, the difference in that fight. And then you got the BMF belt. You got the volume of Max Holloway. I hope he gets back to his kicking. It would be nice to see him use all his tools in this fight because Gaethje's coming out with those kicks. Gaethje hits hard and I don't know that's a tough one I love I like both those guys I'm fans of both of those guys you know I, I watch them as often as I can I've gone back I've watched Max's UFC debut all the way to his last fight you know just studying doing tape even before I was even thinking about coming up to 145 it's just I like to see good technique good MMA and um, what better guy to watch than a guy like Max and Justin Gaethje hey I'll, I'll go, go over, over here, here. Um, over just here. quick other Quick question. Than, oh, sorry. Other than the change of weight class, are there any different things you're going to approach when you're looking at your featherweight tenure when you see those upper echelon guys at 45 compared to the roster at 35? Wait, so what's the question? Are there any things you're going to approach differently now during your 145 tenure when you see the top echelon of guys at the 145 roster? Approach differently? I, I, I don't think so. I mean, still study tape, be a student of the game. I'm not planning on changing any of those things that help get me to the top of 135. I just got to continuously be me and uh, just have the confidence to do what I do in the training room and let it fly on fight night. And I think good things are going to happen. Uh, looking at the upper echelon, it's, it's a stacked division, especially when you get to the top of 145. There's some real good talent there. Uh, it, it'd be interesting to see how I match up with those guys. And after us, you've made it clear for a bit now that you wanted to eventually make this move up to 45. So. Did it sting a bit knowing that the O'Malley fight didn't go your way, seeing that potential fight that could have happened maybe between you and Volk at the time when you were both champs at 35 and 45? Oh, 100%. I, I, I'd, be lying if I said, <laughs> I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. Um, you know, it's not like O'Malley's a bad fighter. He's, I think he's a really good fighter. I just think the timeline was very fitting for him. And as a champion, you know, it would have been nice to have the time off that I requested. But, uh, you know, things happen behind the scenes and... At the end of the day, I signed a contract. I thought I could pull it off. I came up short, and the better guy won that night. So it is what it is. I would like to get that one back, especially if I can win the belt at 145. He's talking about, uh, I want to go get the jet and go to Spain. Like, bro, worry about Marab first, and let me worry about Calvin. If I get through Calvin and I can win the belt again, 
I would love to get that one back on that skinny guy. I, I would love to get that one back. Last one for me. You finally got your fight at the T-Mobile Arena that you've been wanting to do for a while now. So how did that feel? And obviously on this occasion at 300. To be on T-Mobile? Yeah. First time fighting T-Mobile. I fought at Mandalay Bay twice. My UFC debut, Ronda Rousey versus Sarah McMahon, Daniel Cormier versus Patrick Cummins. Um, I'm just... I'm pumped to be on this, man. This is an opportunity of a lifetime for a lot of people. There's a lot of eyeballs, a lot of attraction, a lot of people are going to be watching, tuning in. And if I go out there and, and I show out, it's, it just opens up a lot more doors, even from what I have open now. Um, and we all know how the sport is, is, what have you done for me lately? So if I go out there and do my job in a good way, I think it opens up a lot of opportunities for myself. Aljamain over here. Um, we were you ever offered a rematch at 135 after losing the title? Because you had a lot of title defenses. No, I was not. Unfortunately, it was not. I did ask for it, but I was told, you know, we can't do that. <laughs> so yeah. it's, uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I just look at championship reigns a little bit differently. Everything matters for me. It's not just the way that you win. It's the storyline behind it. If you go out there and you fight guys that are not ranked and not, that are not the best guys, there's something that just doesn't sit right. For me, as a true competitor, I get the entertainment aspect of it, and I appreciate that. Get your money. But to try to say you're the best or you're fighting the best challenges of all time, it, it, that's the part that kind of rubs me the wrong way when it comes to anybody, not even just O'Malley. You should fight the next best guy in line, because otherwise, what are we doing this for? Like, we tooth the nail, clawing to get to the top, and then you get denied because another guy is a bit more popular or because there's a little bit more of an interesting storyline. Like, I get the business side of it, but the athlete side of it, it stings a little bit, you know? So uh, hopefully, hopefully Marab writes the ship, which I think he will, and uh, just go from there. I, I, I'm not bitter about it. Like I said, O'Malley just took an opportunity that the UFC gave him, and he made the most of it. And unfortunately for me, I was the sacrificial lamb, but uh, it is what it is. Are you ever worried that could happen again in your career? No, nah, because next time when I say no to my manager and to my team, I'm just no, you know? Or I say no 10 times and then eventually I, I wilt. You know, I succumb to the pressure a little bit and at the end of the day, I'm a grown ass man. I made my decision, I live with it, but I know if that opportunity came again, I just want to do it, you know? I, I know what makes me happy. I know what the mindset I need to have to go into a fight, and I don't think anyone should be fighting unless you're 100%. I think that's why Izzy took a break, because it, it does take a mental toll on you, you know? And just last thing on 135, what do you, what do you think about Umar Nurmagomedov in the division? It looks like he's going to fight Corey Sanhagen next. Do you, do you feel like that is a tough matchup for Corey? Yeah, it's definitely a tough matchup. Umar's a stud. Uh, Corey's a stud as well. I think the striking aspect is going to play out, because I don't know if Umar's going to be able to get Corey down as easily. And I know he's good when he gets on top. He has really good top pressure, really good control. He's a strong dude. It's just whether or not he could do that to Corey Sanhagen, who moves a lot. Not an easy guy to take down. Um, I think for me, I fought him at the apex, so I kind of had, kind of had it a little bit rigged, you know, right out of the gate. But uh, in a big cage, maybe it's a completely different fight. So I don't know how Umar handles that. But he's a good wrestler. I think he will have a good game plan, and I think Corey's going to have a good game plan as well. Oh. Sorry, just last one for me. Um, I know Calvin has done some training in Vegas before. Had you ever trained with him before, or at least crossed paths in the gym? We, Calvin, Caden, and I actually trained when I was an amateur. Um, I'll let him talk about that. But I was an amateur. I think he was an amateur or a pro. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was doing a lot of stuff I saw on YouTube videos, and it happened to work. But that was 2000, I think, 9 or 10. You know, so we haven't gotten the, the chance to train again. I would have loved to. I, I always thought I was going to fight his teammate, Rob Font. I think I trained one of his other partners, some, some skinny guy. I think he also fights at 45. Um, we, we had some light sparring in Nashville when Dennis Bazuki had made his UFC debut and I flew out. But I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of know what Calvin brings to the table, but we trained that one time, and that was years ago. He's a completely different fighter. I'm a completely different person as well. I mean, honestly, I think I could fight to 40 if I really wanted to, the way I'm feeling. Um, will I do that? Hopefully not. <laughs> that doesn't, fighting at 40 just seems like everything just hurts. Leg kicks hurt. Everything hurts just so much more. It takes a lot longer to heal the older you get. You don't bounce back the same. Uh, yeah, 
We'll see. We'll see. I definitely think I got a, lot, a little bit more in the tank now. We'll see how this fight goes, and then I can make an educated decision on how much longer I want to do this. It's going to be sad. Sad song. Davidson. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Good English. <laughs> um, uh, obviously, a big marquee event here, UFC 300, and you and Cody are kicking off the card. So I guess what are the emotions now that you know fight camp is done and you just have to weigh in and fight on Saturday? Um evento importante. Você e o Cody estão abrindo o evento no sábado. Basicamente, não tem muito mais que falta para essa luta. É só passar pelo pela pesagem e lutar. Como é que está sentindo? Eu estou me sentindo muito bem. É, graças a Deus, bem dizer, já bati o peso, né? É, agora é só assistir o, o, como ele se movimenta, para onde ele anda, que horas ele volta e para que dê tudo certo a minha estratégia na luta. Um, now, I mean, feeling great, um, I pretty much hit weight already, so now it's just a matter of like starting to, to see you know, uh, analyze him a little bit, study him, see how he moves, see what time he comes back from, from his activities and stuff, and just, like, see if the, the strategy that we put on Saturday is going to work. Cody was in here earlier, and he said uh, he called you out, and his words were, he doesn't want this fight, let's make that clear, speaking of you. So I guess, did, is this a fight that you wanted, and when they approached you with Cody, were you happy with the name? Cody was here a little bit earlier today, and he said, he kind of gave a hint and you said, ele não me quer, ele não quer lutar comigo, ele não, tá, ele não, tá, ele não queria essa luta. Então, o que, que você acha do, do, do fato de ele ter falado isso logo cedo? Talvez seja... Sim, sem palavra para o que ele falou, entendeu? Para mim, eu luto com qualquer um, eu estou aqui na organização, aqueles que colocarem para lutar, eu quero, eu agradeço pela oportunidade, né? e tenho certeza que sábado vencendo o Curigaba eu vou ter a maior chance da minha vida, né? eu tenho certeza que ele, a organização vai olhar com carinho para mim e vai ver que eu mereço uma disputa de cinturão. Um, I, to, I, I don't know what to make of that, I don't know what to say, I mean, not much to say except for uh, everybody knows that I I will fight anyone. Um, that the the organization seen that that I'll fight anybody in this in this company, and I think I'm just ready for to fight on Saturday because that winning on Saturday means like I have the greatest opportunity in my life right now, and I think that the organization is going to see me with different eyes and see me with, with some, give me some love and give me the opportunity. When Dana White told everyone that you and Cody were kicking off the card, uh, I'm curious, were you aware of that before then, and what do you think, what do you make of being the first fight of the entire event? Quando o Dana falou que você e o Cody estavam abrindo o evento, é, não sei se você já sabia antes de ser informado, ou é, é, você não sabia, foi uma surpresa, e como é que você vê a oportunidade de abrir o UFC 300? Eu me sinto muito feliz porque, como... Dana falou né, que ele quer ver a casa cheia desde o início, então é, tenho certeza que a minha luta contra o Cody vai lotar a casa cheia, né? E gente pode esperar, o Cody é um cara que é agressivo, né? Ele gosta de uma luta calorosa e eu vou dar essa luta a ele. Um, you know, I'm I was very happy because you think Dana said I want a packed house from the start. And you have, uh, you know, you can bet, you have a 
Cody being an aggressive guy, a guy who likes a heated fight, and I'm going to bring that fight to him. So th that's the fight that we're getting and, and the, fight, the backed house. Well, considering your style of fighting and his style of fighting, do you foresee this possibly reaching the judges' scorecard, or do you kind of assume that you know someone's going to sleep in this fight? Considerando que tem o teu estilo de luta, o estilo de luta dele, você acha que realmente vai ter a possibilidade de ir para decisão ou nem a gente não vai ter essa oportunidade de chegar para decisão e alguém vai ser vai botar alguém para dormir? É bem difícil chegar à decisão, é, como eu falei, ele é um cara bem agressivo, eu também sou. E eu treinei muito o strike para essa luta. E são três rounds de luta, então não tem como a luta ser tão parada, né? Eu espero que ele não, não fuja tanto de mim. Eu quero que ele pare para a gente fazer a nossa trocação. E vamos ver quem que tem a mão mais pesada. Sim, eu não acho que essa luta vai até o fim. Eu acho que eu disse, olha o meu estilo, olha o meu estilo. Eu treinei muito no meu strike para isso. E eu espero que ele não move around and try to avoid that because I want him to, to stand and strike with me. And uh, I don't think, I mean, listen, it's three rounds. And we, we don't got much time. We, we, we need to go at it. Last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the main event and then the BMF fight between Justin and Max? Uh, yeah, my last question. Pensamentos gerais sobre o evento. Primeiro, a luta pelo BMF entre Justin Gage and Max Holloway. And também a luta entre o Poitain e o Jamal Hill. Bom, a uh, Max e, e Just são dois caras incríveis. É, é, eles precisam, e eu tenho certeza que vão proporcionar uma grande luta, um grande show da noite. Poatan e Jamal uh, também conheço os dois, não tenho o que falar, entendeu? E tudo que eu quero é que eles tragam o que o público espera, um show de porrada. Um, I think, I mean, look at this fight between Justin and Max. I mean, look at the, just everything in there to actually be a great fight. I mean, the styles, I mean, they're just going to go at it. Um, and for the Boateng, for Pereira and, and Hill, I mean, got nothing to say on the on bad to say of these guys. I just, I think, I hope that they put on the show and the brawl and the striking, I mean, the banger that everybody wants. Stevenson. Hi. Your first win in the division comes over Rob. It gets you into the rankings. Do you see a win over Cody getting you a title shot? É, a tua primeira vitória na divisão é, contra o Rob Font já te botou no, nos rankings. Você vê essa luta, então, essa é uma vitória no sábado contra o Cody já te dando a oportunidade de, de lutar por um cinturão? É... Eu vejo sim uma vitória, eu dei tudo de mim nos meus treinos, eu treinei muito forte para isso. E o Cori é um cara que tem um nome muito pesado na organização e eu vencendo ele, uh, eu, eu quero muito que a organização me dê essa oportunidade. Uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I trained a lot for this one. I gave my all in my camp. And I think that Cody is the guy that's respected and seen and, and, and by a certain light by the organization. I do believe that after a win like this, I hope that that the UFC gives me this opportunity. And one last thing for me, Cody calling you out, do you see it as something that energizes you or is disrespectful? É, e a minha última pergunta, quando o Cody te intimou e falou aquilo que ele falou, não é que você não queria essa luta, ativa ou isso é, isso é uma coisa que, tipo, como é que você, como é que você... Ah, eu sou muito motivado para todas as minhas lutas, Certamente eu estou mais motivado ainda para lutar contra o Cody, que era um cara que, desde a minha da, da categoria 57 quilos, que eu queria lutar com ele e não deu certo. Né? E agora, graças a Deus, vai dar, deu certo, né? a luta está prestes a acontecer. Então eu estou muito empolgado para isso. E o meu espírito é, é, é esse, cara. Eu quero, eu quero proporcionar a, a luta da noite. You know, I've always been a very motivated guy, a very focused guy on my fights. And as far as Cody's concerned, like, I wanted him back. I, I've, I've talked about him back when I was a flyweight. So it's, I, I've talked about this before. So, I mean, that what I want, it's, it's uh, I come out for my style is to, to give people the fight. That's, that's my style. I want people to see a, a, a show. That's what I want to put on for people. Thank you. Davidson. Hi. Back here. Uh, okay. Um, 
I'm not sure if you're paying attention paying attention to the flyweight division anymore, but I just wanted your thoughts on um, Steve Ursig getting the title shot um, and, and, and being a relatively new UFC fighter. É, não sei se você ainda está prestando atenção nos moscas, mas o que, que você achou, se, se, tá, se você está inteirado de tudo, da chance que o Steve Ursig teve com está tendo agora contra o Pantoja por lutar por um título em pouco tempo na organização? Bom, é, eu achei um pouco precoce, mas é, tudo, tudo depende da organização. Né? Se a organização decidiu colocar ele, que seja ele. Mas eu vejo dois caras que merecem uma disputa de cinturão, que estão é, aí batendo na porta, e eu acho que falta um pouco mais de, de mídia dos caras, talvez, né? para que a organização dê essa chance a eles para lutar pelo cinturão, que são dois russos, é, não me recordo o nome dos caras agora mas dois garotos que merecem são muito talentosos. Um, I think this is a little early, but I think that the organization feels that that, that he deserves a chance, uh, so be it. And I, I just do think that some of the guys that are knocking on the door for that title shot, I think they need more media maybe. I think just they need to, to push it a little harder. Um, I, um, right now, I mean, there's two Russians in your story. I, I'm sorry, the, the, I just drew a blank on the name. But they're the ones that should be actually having the, the title shot right now, I just think. But hey, I mean, he's got the shot. He's got it. Thank you. Chama. Alex, uh, welcome. A huge fight card once again for you. Um, do you ever, your trajectory in this company and how far you've come from your debut to headlining one of the most historic cards ever? Well, Alex, a great card is coming on Sabadão. Did you have an opportunity to be appreciating how far you came to be leading a card like this in your career? No, of course, since I came here, I've been eu acho que eu fui bem recebido, né? mas agora pô, é, é totalmente diferente. Né? Cada luta que passa, é, eu vejo mais o carinho, a confiança, né? não só dos fãs, mas de todo mundo. É, é isso. Não, meu nome é Sodor, e não é minha. Eu vou me convidar aqui, mas eu vejo que cada vez eu aumento a minha popularidade e o amor dos fãs comigo. 
Yeah. Has there ever been a, a fan interaction or someone who's spoke to you, came to you, that's kind of made you, you know, take a step back in that sense, like when you're really appreciating this? Teve alguma interação específica com algum fã, com alguém que te fez assim, dar um passo para trás, sentir, lembrar assim que te marcou? Ah, não entendi. Alguma interação específica, alguma interação específica, alguma com fã chegou, algum momento assim que te marcou um pouco, você lembra? Não, aqui é, sempre tem algo. Aqui ainda eu não, como não saí, a gente não está no hotel, a gente está numa casa, está um pouquinho mais isolado, mas sempre quando estou no hotel, sempre vem muitos fãs, né, falando de histórias, assim, é, falando é, de, de álcool, de bebida, né, sabe da minha história e, e, e quer falar para mim que, pô, às vezes é, parou, né, não, pô, não bebe mais porque viu minha história, viu onde eu cheguei e isso motivou muito e eu acho que é onde que me toca. Well, so far this five week no because we not stay in a fighters hotel. We actually got stay in a house, but we didn't have so much contact with the fans. But in general, man, always wherever I go. Whether it's on five week and I'm on the hotel, always a fan, a fan comes to me and say that they were able to overcome problem with addiction or alcohol, like by seeing his story, by seeing the way that he lived his life, and that is very touch motivating for him. You had the interaction with Jamal yesterday where he had you sign the jacket and stuff. Um, what did you think of that? Were you surprised he came up to you and was so friendly in that moment? Você teve aquele encontro com o Jamal ontem, no qual ele veio pedir você assinar a camiseta, sim, foi bacana com você. Aquilo te surpreendeu um pouco de estar, ter aquele tipo de interação naquele momento? Não, não surpreso, mas né, acho que foi bem respeitoso né, é, ali naquele momento. E, pô, assinei a, a, a blusa ali sem nenhum problema. Well, no surprise, he was very respectful on that moment, so I signed the, the, the sweatshirt with no problem. And what's just your expectation of what he's going to be like in the fight? Serious injury, long layoff for him. Um, how does that affect the fighter that might be in the cage on Saturday compared to the one you've seen on tape? Qual a expectativa que você tem para ele no sábado devido ao fato de ele estar vindo de uma grande lesão? Não sabe se recuperou bem, se não se recuperou. O que você tem em mente do lutador que você vai ver sábado versus o lutador que você já viu nos vídeos anteriores? Não, eu não estou assim em me... com a minha mente assim falando. É... Nesse lado que pô, tá um tempo parado, veio de uma lesão. Eu acho que se ele está ali, né, pô, se ele aceitou essa luta é porque ele está tá 100%, porque ele sabe da responsabilidade, é, ele sabe com quem que ele vai lutar. Então, eu, na minha mente, ele está bem e pô, eu vou fazer a minha parte. I'm not with the expect, definitely not with the expectations of him just being sitting, sitting out, not training because of an injury. If he signed the contract to fight this fight, he did for a reason. He know the test that he had have ahead of, him, of himself, so I'm very aware of that. And just my last question. You weren't able to defend the title at middleweight. What would it mean to you to get a title defense of this belt in this weight class? A última pergunta, você não conseguiu defender o seu cinturão no peso médio. O que significa você estar podendo, talvez, defender o cinturão agora no meio pesado? Bom, esse é meu trabalho, a gente está ali tenta fazer o melhor, né? É, foi o que eu, eu tentei, tentei defender o cinturão. É, pô, perdi, né? Mas isso, acho que não sou o primeiro que acontece isso. É, pô, é todo mundo ali querendo ser um melhor do que o outro ali, pô, querendo sair campeão. E eu tô com a mesma mente, pô, eu sou um cara muito realista, né? Eu já não entro falando, pô, ganhei. Eu sei que eu posso perder, né? Mas a minha mente, pô, eu tô ali para me ganhar. Well, I get there to win, I lost, but you know what I mean? That's part of the game. I don't try to raise not too much high expectations. I got there to fight. I came here for a mindset to win and defend that belt. Alex, right here. Uh, Jamal was in here earlier, and someone asked him, you know, because he has a lot of wins over Brazilians, and they asked, like, like, how are Brazilians this week treating you, the fans? And he said that your fans are a little different than just regular Brazilian MMA fans, but didn't quite get specific. So I'm curious, why do you think your fans are so different from just your casual Brazilian MMA fans? O Jamal veio aqui mais cedo né, e falou, os caras perguntaram para ele como é que é ter tanta vitória assim, contra, contra vários brasileiros e como é que é a interação com os fãs. Ele falou que interagir com seus fãs é uma coisa totalmente diferente do que com outro lutador brasileiro qualquer outro lutador. Mas não foi específico como. O que você acha que ele quis dizer? Não sei. I don't know. Uh, did you do you take anything away from Jamal uh, calling Israel or Israel calling Jamal for to offer some advice ahead of this fight? O que você tira do fato dele ter ligado para o Israel Adesanya e o Adesanya ter dado uns toques para ele no seu jogo? Cara, eu já lutei várias vezes com o Adesanya. Eu acho que ele fez uma coisa boa ali. 
né, muito inteligente da parte dele, é, fazendo essa ligação né, por vídeo, porque eu acho que se ele realmente ele vai é, treinar na academia do Alessânia e, pô, é, um, um exemplo, faz um spy ali com ele, eu acho que seria uma frustração para ele e eu acho que isso não seria bom. Então, a melhor coisa que ele fez foi ter feito uma chamada de vídeo. I think it was good. I think actually the best thing that he could have done for himself, because actually if he had one went and sparred with Israel Desanya, it would have been a big frustration for him, especially for the fact that Alex beat him so many times. And oh, one last one for me. Can I get your thoughts on the BMF fight between Max and Justin? You kick the actual title of the BMF contra the Justin Gage contra Max Holloway. I don't know. I don't know. Alex over here. A lot of talk oh, when people talk about you is your fast rise, and rightly so. You've accomplished so much in MMA in such a short amount of time. So if everything goes your way on Saturday during this big card, what are some other goals you want to check off your list when you're talking about mixed martial arts? Pô, o pessoal fala aí da sua ascensão muito rápida que você teve no MMA, né? Todas essas conquistas. E o que você tem em mente aí, você ganhando sábado, quais seriam os seus próximos passos? Bom, os, os passos é pô, defender o cinturão, né? Eu acho que não, não tem um limite. Quando pô, você é campeão, né? Você vai. As próximas lutas são defesa. Eu não. Pô, eu, é, eu não, vocês, vocês veem que eu não dou nome, né? Quem eles colocar, eu vou lutar. Eu, pô, sou campeão, eu não tenho que escolher nada. Né? E os próximos passos é as defesas. Não tem, não tem um plano. Well, there's no plan, man. The next step is keep defending the title. Unlimited times. I'm not the kind of guy that call our opponents because I'll fight anybody. I'm the champ. So I would just want to keep defending it. And how would you feel if the arena started chanting Chama during your fight? Como é que você vai se sentir se a arena inteira começar a falar Chama durante sua luta? Pô, eu vou adorar, né? Porque a galera, pô, aceitou isso e, pô, tá muito legal. I'm gonna love, man, because, you know, the crowd accepted that and it's something real cool for me. Obrigado. Botan, aqui, Botan. Cara, você estreou no UFC no Madison Square Garden com o um nocaute depois de um ano depois você foi campeão.